After three years in the UK, Danny Badiris returned for Newcastle, joining the new Knights in shining armour, Darius Boyd and Wayne Bennett. Good young squad and uh, obviously a, a new owner and a new coach, so, uh, you know, it's uh, great to be a part of. And back at the Knights to finish his career, former Blues captain Danny Badiris tried to lead from the front. It finished 18 all against Penrith, with all teams benefiting from their hitouts. Clinton Fletcher, Nine News. Knights wheeled out their newcomers against Penrith. Darius Boyd, the best of them in a scrappy draw. While Tamana Tahu's revival in Newcastle continues, scoring the game winner on the bell against the Sharks. <laughs> on a wet night in Musselbrook, Todd Carney couldn't save the Sharks. Tamana Tahu is back with the Knights and crossed in the 22-18 win. After two trials, Wayne Bennett is already tight-lipped. You've decided on your 17, you basically you probably have. Yeah. Elsewhere, Cronulla clawed its way back from a 12-point deficit against the Knights before centre Tamanata, who scored the winning try on the cusp of full-time. Newcastle kicks off the NRL Premiership in 10 days' time against St George Illawarra. So the Knights are the first team to feature in our special season preview. After recruiting some big names, none bigger than the coach, they say they're ready to live up to the hype. They've tantalised their fans for too long. With Wayne Bennett in control, the time for the Knights to aim up is now. The fans deserve deserve um, you know, good results right from day one. We've got, we've, got, um, we've got some fantastic players, we've got the number one coach and um, they'll certainly be expecting the results right from the start. So it's, us, it's down to us as players now to, to get those results and make sure we're playing well. The Knights have been staggering financially for years, but owner Nathan Tinkler's wallet has lured names like Badiris, Tahu, Boyd and Snowden. The ace in the pack though, try scoring machine Aku Yawate. Jared Mullins the wild card, can Bennett get the best from him? As for Yuate, staff at the local bistro reckon he's in for a huge year. Yuate holds a record for the most number of chicken schnitzels any humans ever consumed in any one setting. My staff came to me and said, this man's going to blow up. Yuate's Hall, nine schnitzels. Saturday's charity shield win over the Rabbitohs proved the critics may have written off the Dragons too soon. Few believe the 2010 Premiers will make the top eight this season. If we start worrying about what people are saying about us, you know, it's sort of distracting, detracting or just distracting us from what we have to go out there and do on the field. The real proof will be in the season opener against Bennett's Newcastle. I think um, all Wayne's teams start well, so um, the, the Knights will be no different, we think. The Knights have no reason to be off the ball come round one, today unveiling their new training facility to go with their new coach. Stu Adam, 7 News. Plus, Br Wayne's brand new world in Newcastle as a favourite son returns for the Knights to take on the Dragons. Title favourites West Tigers and reigning premiers Manly will launch their seasons tonight with less than a week to go until the NRL kicks off. In Newcastle, Wayne Bennett is so confident he's already named his team for Thursday's season opening blockbuster against his old club, the Dragons. New club, new colours, but it's the same old Wayne Bennett. Wayne, are you excited about uh, this squad that you've uh, got assembled here? Do I look excited? <laughs> <laughs> There's no chance expanding on that at all, is there? Or... Not today. <laughs> the Supercoach launched Newcastle's new era under billionaire owner Nathan Tinkler today, naming Kurt Gidley as captain. It's always exciting to be named captain and... Um... And certainly you feel that when you lead the team out to a, to a home ground. 2001 Premiership stars Danny Badiris and Tamana Tahu are back. Even the most senior players have suffered under the master of pre-season punishment. Oh, I think for all of them here is to um, just to um, you know, reach their wonderful potential they've all got because there's certainly a squad with a lot of mobility in it. And they're ready for the Dragons in next Thursday's season opener. We'll have to be good on, on Thursday night. I'm sure the Dragons will be. And, um, and I'm sure we will be, we've done a lot of things right in, in our pre-season and our preparation, so I don't have a lot of regrets about where we're at right now. It's just a matter of getting out there and start to be the team we want to be. The Newcastle Knights believe St George Illawarra will be just as threatening without Wayne Bennett in charge when the teams line up in this week's NRL season opener. But they agree their new coach's knowledge of his former Dragons players will be a plus. It is an advantage, but, um, you know, at the end of the day, it comes down to the players. Wayne's sitting up there and uh, he can tell us all the information, but we're the ones that got to, to do the job. 
The dragon simply laughing off the Bennett factor. He's probably the only one that knows my weaknesses. I'm pretty good. <laughs> Despite all the hype ahead of Thursday night's game, tickets are still available. It's time now for sport. Good evening, Ken. Good evening to you, Peter. You know, it's just days until the NRL kicks off and we have Andrew John's exclusive preview. The teams to watch and the player he thinks is league's best. The footy's nearly back and everyone's going to be saying it's the best season ever. So who are the players to watch and the teams to beat? And there's no one better to ask than Andrew Johns. He was the greatest player of his era, perhaps even the best ever. So when Andrew Johns speaks, it's worth listening. Certain guys in rugby league have been sprinkled with that, you know, that magic dust. You know, Benji's one of them, Billy Slater. But of all the game's stars, Johns reserves the highest praise for Warriors halfback Sean Johnson. I've never seen anyone in my time in football with so many natural gifts. Uh, he's so fast, he sees things. He's also the main reason Johns rates the Warriors' chances so highly. So, who is Joey backing to be the hottest teams in 2012? First, the Warriors, last season's runners-up and a real chance of going one better. Manly, reigning premiers, aiming to go back-to-back -back under a new coach. And the West Tigers, the current competition favourites. But fans of other clubs shouldn't lose heart. This year, everyone can make the eight. It's just... It's going to be such a great competition. The two clubs Johns predicts will show the biggest improvement are the Bulldogs under Des Hasler and Newcastle, now guided by the great Wayne Bennett. But it's another ex-Dragon who Joey believes will give the Knights a crucial edge. Darius Boyd, I think he's the buyer of the year. He, you know, he's in the, my top ten players in the world. Erin Molan, Nine News. Sport now with Tony Squires and the Knights look good for the season opener. Sadly true, Mark. Sadly true. But uh, a lot of big things expected of them with Wayne Bennett and Darius Boyd keen to take on their old club. And Boyd raving about the talent among his new teammates. Former Dragon Darius Boyd says, like the rest of us, he and coach Wayne Bennett can't wait for Thursday night's season opener against their old club. The new Knights are hoping their magic spreads to Newcastle with Boyd blown away by the talent at the club. He gets the best view from fullback and Darius Boyd says with Wayne Bennett at the helm, this night's machine will take some stopping this year. I think that's the best thing about Wayne. I think he usually brings out the best in everybody and the first thing I notice when I come here, a lot of the boys are very, very athletically physical and strong and fast and they lift a lot of big weights. Thursday night will be a weight off their shoulders as a host of ex-Dragons get the clash with their old club out of the way. Made some good friends and I suppose playing against your mates it's always probably a bit more exciting. I've got a um, few phone calls already from a few of the boys saying they'll take my head off but you know I'll tell them can't wait, so it should be a good match. Oh, it's going to be different for us, um, you know, but uh, I, I know everyone's excited about playing against the old coach. New coach Steve Price can't wait either, even if he does have big boots to fill. Well, someone's got to take it on, don't they? You know, I've learned a hell of a lot under 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 the big fella, and um, you know, I'm my own man. And as Price says, all that matters now for all clubs is getting wins on the board, or the heat will be on, no matter who you are. Yeah, that's right, Pat. There's um, there's pressure on all 16 coaches in the NRL, and not only myself. Luckily for Price, the ice at training was only a precaution for playmaker Jamie Soward. Patrick Mullahan, Seven News. 24 hours till season kickoff, with the Knights out to impress the coach and the owner. Owner Nathan Tinkler has joined coach Wayne Bennett at training as his Knights prepared for tomorrow's NRL season opener against the Dragons. Captain Kurt Gidley says the backing of the billionaire mining magnate means they have no excuses this year. He's put plenty of money into the Knights, but it's not just cash that Nathan Tinkler's dropped since he took over Newcastle. And after going from this to this, coach Wayne Bennett was almost ready to get the boss to suit up at training. He's just a very... Um proud and loyal member of the community and you know wants to um, turn up for his team. Now the Knights say it's time to repay that support. We don't have any excuses, we've got great facilities, we've got great backing, uh, you know great staff and great coach, it's, it's really down to the players to get the results now. But the players Bennett left behind say Wayne's world's now been forgotten. Yeah you know, it's a business thing, um, he's moved on and you know, we're very happy with Pricey so looking forward to playing. This is 
a, a group that's that's been to the top and knows what you have to do to get there. Now the on-field action, fellas, yeah. kicks off tomorrow night, and it couldn't be any bigger. What a what a boon for the NRL to come up with Wayne Bennett and the Newcastle Knights taking on his former club, of course, the Dragons. It's going to be massive up there at Hunter Stadium, isn't it? Yeah, it is going to be huge, and uh, the Newcastle Knights are favourites, rightfully so. It, you know, it's re really strange, boys. The perception of this, what's been built up right through the pre-season, has been that the Knights. Okay, are up there. They're the glamour team. They're the contenders. Meanwhile, you know they're going they're going north. Meanwhile, the poor old dragons are going this way. I tell you, just because Wayne Bennett's left St George Illawarra Dragons, he hasn't no. taken the magic with him, mate. The discipline, all that painstaking hard work he's put in, it's still there. And, and I can tell you, the mail I'm getting out of Newcastle, MG, is, is that Wayne was entirely happy with the Knights' troll form. Mm -hmm. I've actually spoke to an insider there, someone close to Wayne, who said that Cla Wayne confided in him and said, there is a losing culture there, I've got to turn around. They've made the final four twice in 10 years. This game isn't all that it seems. Wayne, Wayne Bennett is a special coach, but Wayne Bennett yeah. is, a, is a coach who will be looked in, in history as probably one of the top three coaches in our game. For him to lose, leave the Dragons and go to the Knights, that is a massive signing. Massive signing. Yeah, but when he went to the Dragons, they were this far away. They got knocked out one game before yep. the grand final, one game before the grand final. Mm. Well, the Knights, they just scraped into the eight. So there's a lot more improvement in the Knights, but I think that they're a little bit away from the Dragons Absolutely. at the moment. I feel like then there's a bigger gap for him to close to get the premiership. And then there's Nathan Tinkler, which we're going to talk about in contrary <laughs> conduct, <laughs> which, yeah. is, which is a biggie. I mean, it's a biggie for the NRL and a big one for Newcastle. Yeah. Now, speaking of Newcastle boys, I went up to Newcastle the other day. Mm -hmm. The club, I've got to say, has come so far since 1988, and I'm up there and caught up with uh, the old neck of the woods. Cool. Rugby League has always been an obsession in the town of Newcastle. So in 1988, when the Newcastle Knights were accepted into what is now the National Rugby League competition, it was hailed as a potential super club. The junior base was enormous and the supporters fanatical. It was a football club which represented the people of the city perfectly. It lacked pretense and was blue collar right down to the players it recruited. In fact, unbelievably, in 1988, the total wages spent on the playing staff was just $80,000. Their recruitment policy was simple. Sign players with the two Ts. Tough and plenty of tomorrows left. In the following 24 years, the club changed in many ways. It produced homegrown internationals, origin captains, once-in-a-lifetime champions, and won dramatic grand finals. Historically, though, the Newcastle Knights' financial position can mostly be described as disastrous. Few people know how many times this club has come close to complete bankruptcy and shutting its doors. You see, the Newcastle Knights could never work out a way to turn fanatical support into dollars and cents. But sometimes, I suppose, you need just one. And that one is Nathan Tinkler. This coal miner turned coal magnate has turned the Newcastle Knights from paupers into princes almost overnight. And to mark his intentions, Nathan Tinkler's delivered to the working class city the greatest coach in rugby league history, Wayne Bennett. Wayne, are you excited about uh, this squad that you've uh, got assembled here? Do I look excited? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for the Newcastle Knights, times have certainly changed. The challenge in 2012 isn't a financial one. It's managing and living up to the expectations of the football-mad Newcastle community. Are they going to win the comp? Of course they're going to win the comp. <laughs> Woo! Go the Knights! Newcastle! Newcastle! I reckon we get a three-peat. 13, 14, 15, 16, oh, mate, all the way to 20. Certainly one of the stories of 2012 will be the relationship between Tinkler and Bennett, two of the sport's most powerful men. And the man at the very coalface of this potentially uneasy relationship is his new CEO, Matt Gidley. The new CEO was as naturally gifted a bloke as I'd ever played with, and many believe he'll need every bit of this guile and skill to manage the Tinkler-Bennett relationship. There's been a lot happening in the last probably eight months, I mean, and, and the stadium here, right, it's probably a bit of a snapshot of what's happened across our whole business. I mean, it, it's, it's absolutely first class now, and um, we were lucky enough to be able to open this last year and, and play the Dragons, and I think all our, our supporters and members and sponsors really appreciate it, and particularly our players, you know, really appreciate playing here. Nathan Tinkler, Wayne Bennett, when the day comes that they're bluing, your CEO, in the meat and the sandwich, how are you going to handle it? 
Well, I think, and, I, and I've said this to the players as well, you know, uh, well, whilst I've got an open door policy and I'm happy to sit and talk with all the players, you know, I can guarantee whatever decision I make, it'll, it'll be honest and it'll be the club's best interest. And I think that's important. The club's bigger than, than any individual, you know, whether it's Nathan, Wayne or myself. Um, so we, we've, we've got nearly 17,000 members this year. So um, the club, you know, plays an integral part in the community. So I think whatever decision we make, it's got to be honest and it's got to be the club's best interest. In a year of many great stories for Newcastle, this next one could possibly be the biggest. Yet, yeah, Danny Baderis, one of the club's greatest and most inspiring leaders returns. Why the hell did he leave in the first place? I couldn't wait to get back here, um, to be amongst the, some old teammates and be at the old, uh, the old ground. I was wishing that I was going to get through those trials and I've done that and um, straight away focused returning to that uh, first game against the Dragons, so can't wait. What you can gather here is this club has changed forever, but don't think it's going to be all smooth sailing. This team has only made the top four twice in the last ten years. The people in the stands here used to cheer for the team just to compete and compete hard. Now they'll be cheering for the team to win, win often and win well. It's a big difference. Whatever happens, it's going to be an interesting year for many reasons and it all starts tomorrow night. Oh, great story. One question there, and you, you mentioned at the start of the show that this is going to be no BS. Um, Danny Badiris, you said that the, in the, that piece, why the hell did he leave? Why did Danny Badiris leave our shores for 12 months and then now he's back? Well, he had to leave for three years and, uh, well, no BS, Brian Smith let him go. Have they got something going on? Like, was there any... I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Uh, uh, I don't know about that. I mean, let's not rewrite history. That's what it, it was. I mean, the thing about it was, uh, MG, Smithy was coach, and when you're a coach, you've got to make decisions. At the time, he believed... Yeah, but you build a club yeah, you be around Denny Badir. And he believed he was He's surplus to requirements. Hey, Gordon, I'm not arguing with you, mate. Yeah. It was the biggest dud decision, one of the biggest dud decisions yeah. in the club's history. So he's back after three years. Three yeah. years, really? I didn't, I didn't think it was... Three years gone. I thought it was 12. And what, what happens? The moment Wayne comes That's back... That's what in, morning the, radio does, dear. Yeah, it does. We walk around jet lagged all the time. Right now. So, Kenny, the question is: uh, Is he still? Has he still got it? Has Danny Badiris still got what it takes? Wayne Bennett thinks so. It's the first thing he does. He comes back in. He calls Danny Badiris up, and mm. Badiris nearly jumps through the phone when he runs onto the stadium tomorrow night. You watch him go tomorrow night, Badiris. Yes. And you know, Badiris is not one of these blokes who talks himself up. But I asked him the other day. I said, "Mate, can you still do this?" He said, "Absolutely." Mm. I said, "Can you play State of Origin?" He said, "Absolutely." He's in the top three hookers ever to play our game. Steve yeah, Rollers, Cameron Smith and Danny Bedell. He also did yeah. say recently uh, in an interview we did that uh, you know, had he not gone to the UK, he probably wouldn't be playing here in 2012. He would have burnt out. It all would have all been done. Possibly, so yeah, in no. some ways it's been a blessing yeah. in disguise Broke for him. He had a broken leg over exactly had a lot of injuries right. yep. had a lot of things. It wasn't entirely a great move for him. But hey, he's, he's back. Great to yeah. have him back. And Won a, a championship. There's a few back. Hoffman a, as well. Yep, Matty coming King, off the back of a championship with the Leeds Rhinos. He's ready to rock in 20 to 12. No doubt about that. We changed the ruling of a try. No. What planet is Bill on? Oh, Guy and Lewis, they're mouthing off at each other. Oh, 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 what? Boy, boy, what? Oh, boy. Yes, the opinions expressed here don't reflect those of the management. In fact, the management don't want to know much about this segment, the two of the truth. Show, in it fact. could be a fairly uh, free-spirited conversation. Joining us each week on Contrary Conduct uh, from the uh, Daily Telegraph is Paul Kent. Paul, great to have you on board. It's nice to be here, Warren. It's been uh, been a sad 12 months off here, Matty. So it has been, mate. We can roll them up again. As long as you're getting paid, it's OK. <laughs> we wanted to call this, this. We did <laughs> want to call this segment contra uh, Controversy Corner, but Matty yeah. mucked that up for us as far as getting that uh, rights was concerned. So might have been, might have been, it might have, might have been the bucks. Now, of course, we spoke about the uh, Newcastle Knights taking on this and George Laura Dragons, the massive opening to the season tomorrow night. Nathan Tinkler, a fairly forcible type up there, of course, as an owner. Um, we've seen just what's happened in the FFA, the football, with Clive Palmer and Frank Lowy. It can turn to tears. Does this one turn to tears with Nathan yeah, Tinkler and Wayne Bennett there? It ends in tears. Eventually, it, it will end in tears. But the, the trick for Wayne is to win the Premiership before it ends in yeah. tears. That, that's all it's about. Mm -hmm. Wayne's up there four years. If Wayne hasn't won the Premiership in three years, he won't be winning it in four. Because he won't get a fourth year. What oh, about well, two? he could get a four. He could get a fourth year if they come close. But mm. I think the the. the the time frame he's got, it'll take him three years to get the roster he wants. Mm -hmm. And from that point, that'll be the year that they'll be all guns blazing. What about if they don't make the eight in the first two? 
uh, does he get could to be the in some trouble. Yeah, I think he will be in trouble. Feel the shame, mate. He's shown, boys, he's a hard nosed businessman. Re- really hard nosed. Well, you don't get uh, to where uh, you are. Yeah, exactly, Gordy. Uh, mate, you speak to people to say well, he's neither law. Horse trainers. He's through the horse trainers all the time. I was going to say time. he's neither law nor patient. And mm. he's loyal to success. And we've seen the Ken Edwards situation. He puts people in positions and expects them to do it right. And if they don't do it right, they're gone. I will say this too. That Ken Edwards situation would make Wayne Bennett just sit back and go, What the? Whoa. Why, because, what am I, 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 because Wayne, I think that Wayne, was his best friend in there because obviously was. it was Shane, Shane working at the Broncos. So Wayne's worked with that family for a hell of a long time. I think that's Mate, one guy that Wayne would have to do to say, that's my friend in here. So that's but I now. think we should have more Tinky boys in the game. I think Nathan Tinkler's a breath of fresh air. I don't care if it ends in tears. As long as the next, few, the next, the next few years, Get as long as it, you know Clive Palmer be good. Grand final day, we get a big cage, have a cage fight, Clive Palmer and Tinky boy. <laughs> Could be Who'd win? Battle of the codes. Yeah. And Frank Lowy. Tinky boy. You've written about this uh, little scenario, of course, in the paper tomorrow, I believe. Yes, that's right. Uh, <laughs> in the uh, tell them right now. Uh, oh, oh, oh. And look, it's beware of the hidden dragons. I talk about the expectation on, uh, on, on the Newcastle Knights. But I tell you what, I see something about the Dragons. They're hiding in the long grass. They get. Uh, I, I heard Matt Cooper say this preparation for us has been Origin-like. This is going to be a torrid contest. I can't believe they've been overlooked, Matt. I, I really can't believe yeah, it. all this hype thing. about Newcastle and yeah. Wayne Bennett. Fact that Wayne Bennett has still inherited the same roster that struggled to make yeah, the eight so, last it's year. So different. Oh, look, I know so that. So different. The I Dragons boys have so been different. in big games before. Like they played under Wayne yep. for three years, so they know how to build for this. Some of these Knights players have never had the pressure of being coached by Wayne Bennett. The right. Being favourites by so much against Knights the side that won the Knights, 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 scored scored 20, Knights scored 20 points. There's two. They win it. Right out. And you've got Badiris, uh, you've got, uh, you got Gidley Mullen, and you've got Darius Boyd. Mate, he's different gravy, that bloke. I tell you, he's, he'll take what, it to another level. What about the Knights defensively, though? Yeah. That's, that's, that's the worry. Yeah. That's the worry. That's, 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 that's definitely the worry. And plus, the NRL kicks off in Newcastle. Rugby League fans are on the move again. Will the White Knight Wayne Bennett turn Dragon Slayer? Well, the wait is over for footy fans with the NRL Premiership kicking off tonight in Newcastle. And what a start we have. Wayne Bennett's first game as coach of the Knights against his old team, St George Illawarra. Reporter Matt Sulo is in Newcastle. And Matt, are the crowds rolling in yet? Yes, Horsey, the crowd is building and with just under two hours until kickoff, you wouldn't imagine there's going to be too many spare seats left inside the stadium. Of course, tonight sees Wayne Bennett up against his former club. There'll also be plenty of eyes on Darius Boyd at fullback. He pushes Kirk Idley to 5'8". And don't forget names like Cade Snowden, Danny Badiris and Tamana Tahu for the Knights. So they have a pretty impressive team on paper and you just get the feeling, talking to Knights fans coming in, that they believe this is the best chance their club has had in a very long time to win a premiership. Here's a bit of what they had to say. Freaking fantastic! I'm a little excited, can't you tell? Newcastle, woo! It'll bring us stability that he'd done at St George. And um, hopefully the next couple of years we win a premiership. Now being the first game of the season, there will be a bit of extra excitement. A helicopter will come into Hunter Stadium, dropping off the Telstra Premiership trophy. And just finally, a bit of good news for fans of the Red V. The Dragons haven't been beaten at this ground since 2003. So Horsey, can Wayne Bennett turn that around for the Knights? We'll just have to wait and see. It's a sellout for tonight's NRL season opener between the Knights and the Dragons in Newcastle. Now, Peter Sterling joins me live, and Peter, Wayne Bennett coaching against his old club has given Knights fans plenty of confidence for this one. One thing that the Newcastle faithful don't lack at the moment, Ken, is optimism and expectation, probably fuelled by new boss Nathan Tinkler coming out with tongue-in-cheek, saying they'd win four premierships under Wayne Bennett's watch. But he's got a quality squad to work with, strengthened by the fact that Tamana Tahu and Danny Badiris have come back into the fold. Darius Boyd is an elite player. Keep an eye out for a young 20-year-old off the bench tonight called Alex McKinnon. He is a player of the future for them as well. OK, that's the key. What's your tip uh, tonight, Stello? Look, I think the Knights can sneak home. We won't see too much from these teams. It'll be about completion rates, good kicking game, well served in that department with Jared Mullen and Jamie Sowd. I think it'll be a tight one. And tonight, the honour afforded to Andrew Johns in bringing in on the chopper the Telstra Premiership trophy. He'll be coming over the stand, which is behind me, just happens to bear his name. 
Good on you. Thank you very much, Peter. Enjoy the night. Plus, live to Newcastle for the Knights and Dragons season opener. Hallelujah, Rugby League is back. And tonight it's all about Wayne Bennett and Newcastle as they take on the master coach's former side, the Dragons. League reporter Patrick Mollahan is right there where I want to be. And Pat, it's a town with high hopes. Tony, in Wayne they trust. Knights fans and players believe Bennett can lead them to Rugby League's promised land. He did it for the Broncos, he did it for the Dragons, and now the people of Newcastle, well, they hope it is their turn. And I can tell you, his players have told me they want to make a statement up against his old club. Probably want to prove to you know, our fans and everyone out there in the Rugby League world that we're a changed team this year. And you only have to look at the guns Wayne Bennett's brought here to Newcastle to realise they can shock this competition. It's crazy the roster Wayne brings. Um, I think only a coach like him can get a roster like that. Everyone wants to play for him, everyone wants to learn of him. The man who learned most off him, Steve Price, is in charge of the Dragons tonight. They certainly look relaxed strolling around Newcastle today and Price definitely isn't scared by the challenge. I'm going to put a, a stamp on, on, on the, uh, the, the footy club over the, over the next uh, couple, couple of years, which you'll see. Now, it's not sold out. Hometown hero Andrew Johns, he'll bring, bring the Premiership trophy in tonight. And look, Tony, I've got to tell you, mate, I think your Dragons, they'll go close. They'll give a professional performance. But, mate, here in Tinkler Town, you've got to go with the Knights. Doing it for Benny Hornby playing his 250th game. Thank you so much, Pat Mollahan there in Newcastle. <laughs> And very shortly on this very show, we're going to have Gus Bill talking live with Wayne Bennett. That should be outstanding. After the Newcastle Knights got beaten tonight, they're setting it up right now. Now, we're hearing that Wayne Bennett hasn't actually come out of the dressing room yet, the Newcastle dressing room. He might be a bit upset. I'm not sure what's going on. He hasn't attended the press conference, and that's, what, uh, nearly half an hour after the game. So we're hopeful of Gus getting him very, very soon. We'll cross there as soon as we can get him. All right, we're underway. We're underway the season, of course. Newcastle tonight going down 15-14. But right now we've got uh, Phil Gould is speaking to Wayne Bennett. I won't ask how you feel after a one-point loss than that, um, but your first impressions of your game. Oh, well, we were pretty courageous and stayed at it, but we made too many errors and put ourselves under too much pressure and uh, we probably got what we deserved. All right. Your first off-season with this team, what were you looking for as you came into this first game? Oh, just to see where they're at, what the things that, um, that they do well and don't do so well. and You don't really know until you get under pressure. Training is totally different to, to playing, and whilst training is important, but it's you know what comes with playing with the pressure and um, and the execution under pressure. So I uh, need to, to. We played two trials and that gives you a bit of indication, but you need fixture matches. So. All right, uh, it's a pretty stiff examination first up. Again. I mean, you're not playing slouches. That's a team that you've had for three years. They know their stuff. Yeah, they do, and they played their stuff there tonight pretty well, actually. And first half was really tough. First half, I don't know whether that came across from the. The TV or the fans or whatever, but I can tell you it was a tough first half, for first game of the season. It was quick, um, plenty of good hits in it, plenty of tough running, uh, some good skills, but it was it was fast. Yeah, I, I thought you actually looked a little sluggish earlier. They took you bits by surprise. They were very powerful. Yeah, they so were. that was the courage part. You did really well to hang in there. We did. Yeah. We did. Yeah. We yeah. Uh, said it went half time. We hadn't gone there with the discipline we displayed in the first half, and you know stayed around and complete, completed a similar so number of sets to what they did, they'd have beaten us by 20, well, they'd have us by 20 points at half time. And at 14-6 in the second half, there was a danger it was going to get away from you again, but yeah, they really hung they in. They hung in again, yeah. which is great. I need them to do that, you know, until we get ourselves where we want to be and the team we want to be. So, uh, yeah, so the courage was good when we just executed poorly in different parts of the game. Have you been able to keep the expectation away from them? A lot of hype, a lot of talk about you coming here, but I know you, this is the first in a long road. I mean, you, you'll have your plan where you want to be at certain stages where they're at the moment? Well, I am physically, yeah, but, but you're right. I, I mean, I didn't, you know, I didn't know what the result was going to be here tonight. I didn't come here with a, thinking we couldn't win, but I didn't come here thinking well, we we're going to romp it in either. I just, um, and I thought, it, you know, I wanted to be close, you know, even if we lost it. I didn't want to be beaten by 10, 15 points and lose confidence. We won't lose confidence out of the night. We'll get some confidence out of the, tonight, and that's, that's the progress for us. We've got to, you know, work out what we need to do to win and uh, build our confidence rather than have it the reverse, have a, a really sloppy performance, get beaten you know, by 10, 20 points, and then no one gets in to go to that door. Still gut-wrenching to lose 
by a point in that way, isn't it? Yeah, it is, but it's, you know, it's a lot more gut-wrenching than last season when we lost by a point to the yeah. Broncos. But uh, no, it is a gut-wrenching way. Um, but, you know, to their credit, we, we weren't playing all that great, but we stayed in it and we got to 14 all. I'm not just sure how we got there because we just didn't kind of give up and made the Dragons earn everything they got. And then we got a bit of a lucky break and we picked up a try and then we picked up a penalty and all of a sudden there's 14 all. So that were the, that were the upsides and, and um, I didn't think we probably should have been at 14 all the way yeah. the mistakes we'd made in that second half. But we were and so then all of a sudden you get an extra time and you know you're losing golden point. But are you really disappointed? Well. Yeah, I'm disappointed that we lost, but I'm not, I'm not shattered because I know that there's lots of things we can do better and will do better. That's the impression I got, that, you know, disappointed to lose, but I got yeah. a positive signs there with the courage. Uh, you say you're living in Newcastle. How have you found it since you've been up yeah, here? Yeah, it's been good. It's um, easy city to live. Everyone's been um, very friendly. Um, so it's Big crowd it's, tonight. Yeah, it was a wonderful crowd tonight. I think that was a great thing. I thought it was a great promotion by you know, Channel 9, the league, everybody kind of bought into the night, the media. Been a great build up to it, great way to start the season, and uh, it was a quality game of football. Bad luck on the loss, thanks for the entertainment, and uh, good yeah. luck for the rest of the season. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Back. And a massive thank you to, to Phil Gould for hanging around, also Wayne Bennett, um, and the Newcastle Knights for allowing us to do that because, I mean, that's gold for fans at home you know, who never get to hear Wayne talk. I mean, that's fantastic for the people here and also the people watching at home. And once again, a huge thank you to Wayne and Phil for hanging around. And I want to give a big thank you to Erin Mullen for your effort tonight. Well done. Thank Please thank Erin. We'll see you next week. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Back after this break, plenty more on the footy show. Still another hour and a half to go yet. <laughs> Hang with us. Also tonight, Jamie Soward sinks his former coach in a cracking Golden Point season opener. Well, last night, the Wayne Bennett era at Newcastle got off to a losing start against his former side, St George Illawarra. It was a thriller, with Jamie Soward slotting a field goal in Golden Point extra time. One kick sinking the hopes of Knights fans. Jamie Sowers field goal four minutes into extra time, sealing a 15-14 win. It was probably there a little bit early. We just didn't you know, stick to the plan. So, um, But in the end, we got there and got the points. Newcastle coach Wayne Bennett typically coy when asked what positives he could take from the game. Well, it was great. <laughs> glad, to, glad, to, glad to see so many of them here. Almost 30,000 fans saw the Dragons score the first try of the season. Jared Mullen then hitting back with a brilliant solo run. Mullen goes over to score for the Newcastle Knights. Tensions flared in the second half. Tamana Tahu placed on report for this. Stands over him, gives him a little shove with the knee. Oh, I thought the penalty was sufficient. I didn't, wasn't much in it. Tahu redeeming himself, setting up the night's second try. But at 14 all, missed chances allowed the Dragons a spot in front of goal. And every guy took that field tonight. Very proud of him the way the red V and, you know, we only can get better. For Bennett, it's a case of work in progress for the Knights. Well, I'm sure the players will realise what they can do better, should do better want to do better. So that's where we're at tonight. Matt Sulo, 10 News. Now, Dragons match winner Jamie Soward says he's ready to recapture the form which made him an Origin star last year. After beating the Knights 15-14 to 14 in the NRL season opener, Soward told 9 News he owes his revival to a former Olympian. A golden strike in Golden Point was Jamie Soward's lethal left boot which ruined Wayne's welcome to Newcastle last night. But it's his legs which have been the major concern for the Dragons. Last night, Soward's coach let slip that former Olympic sprinter Matt Shervington has been working with the Dragons and Soward and has his star playmaker back to his best. He's got his speed back? Yeah, he has. He's, um, you know, he had a, a, a lower, lower back injury there for a bit back into this last season. Uh, he's done a hell of a lot of speed work with Matt Shervington in the, in the, uh, the pre-season. And, uh, yeah, he's uh, certainly working hard at it. How has he helped you? Uh, he's just working on us technically and a few different things, and we're really enjoying it. Coach has said you've got your speed back. Yeah, last year was a tough year for me. I battled that hamstring all year, and 
Uh, we've done some different things this year in our preparation. I'm really reaping the benefits. The Dragons were expected to be big players in a night for Bennett and the Knights, but they showed real resolve. And in the end, it was a victory for the man Bennett chose to do the top job at the Dragons. Steve Price won Wayne Bennett nil. Oh, you said that, not me. No one's bigger than this footy club, and um, I'm certainly not, not that either. Um, you know, we had 17 guys who took the field tonight, and they were courageous. And as usual, Bennett was all class last night. As a loser, he still took time out to visit his old team. He knows there are better days ahead. Danny Weidler, Nine News. Plus, the Dragons get the better of their old boss. Tamana Tahu has a nervous wait after he was reported for kneeing in last night's season opener against the Dragons. The Knights losing a thriller in Golden Point. After all the hype, the Knights went behind closed doors for their recovery session. Over 30,000 at Hunter Stadium thought it would be Wayne Bennett teaching his old team a lesson. But the Dragons struck first through Brett Morris. Down by two at the break, Tamana Tahu lashed out at Matt Pryor with his knee. He's on report. Oh, I thought the penalty was sufficient. I didn't, wasn't much in it. It was just stupid stuff, you know. A bit of frustration. wasn't looking at more than the girls, but there was nothing major there. The Dragons reacted, but Pryor says that's where it should end. I think it might have looked worse than what it was. It was only a, a little bit of niggle. It's just footage, it's just the way it goes. Tahu found a better use for his hands. Gidley gets it to Tahu. 14 all into Golden Point. Jamie Soward with the knockout blow. He's got the Courageous effort. Um, every guy took that field tonight. Very proud of him to wear the red V. We're not a one game team. It wasn't about, you know, blasting off out here tonight. And we're back for another Butler season at the game plan. I get the impression it's been a very long off season, am I right? Yeah. So you're hungry for a bit more football? Yeah. Well, you're going to love this menu. Here's what's coming up. Yeah. Coming up, they're calling it the second coming in Newcastle. Danny Baderas has returned and will be with us tonight. Joel, will Newcastle definitely make the top four this year now they have Wayne Bennett as coach? Absolutely. I saw enough uh, on Thursday night to suggest they will. Uh, they're going to be very hard to beat up there and they'll win enough on the road. Yes, they will. Newcastle for the top eight, Andrew. I don't think they'll make the top four. They will not make the top four. They'll scrape in. There'll be a lot of sides around the middle of the table. Newcastle to scrape in in the top eight. Yeah, I'm more with you, I think, on that one. To make the top eight for sure, though. Coming up next, one of Newcastle's greatest ever players, Danny Baderas, the Knights legend, returned to the NRL seven days ago, and we'll catch up with him after this short break right here on The Game Plan. Yes, a big game on Sunday is at Shark Park with Cronulla tagging on Danny Baderas's Newcastle side, Joel. Yeah, well, Andrew, if the Sharks are to win this, it's going to be a mighty, mighty win. There's a real imbalance around the turnaround times. Uh, five days for the Shark. He's after heat conditions there. Really troubling. The back three, look, Mills, he comes into the side. It was an average game from right. He makes way. The number seven, Todd Carney, was quiet for that first hour, and then, bang, he exploded into the game. Look, they're a very, very good side, this Shark side. They're going to trouble many teams, but I think the same of the opposition. The Newcastle Knights, look, they were great up there. They were gallant in defeat. Every one of their back line, as you see on the screen here, have either played for their state or their country. So it's a slick back line there. Uh, of course, the front row and the forwards, superb as well. We love the hooker. We'll speak to him very shortly. And a good bench too. So they're going to be a very, very powerful side, the Newcastle Knights. I found it very hard to tip, but I'm going to lean towards the Newcastle Knights here. Well, the three of us were up at Hunter Stadium for that opening game of the season last week. And it was great to see Danny Baderas back in action for Newcastle. He joins us from Newcastle. Good day, Danny. How are you going? Excellent. Well, you've been in England for a couple of years. You've come back to the NRL. How did you find the pace of things last Thursday? Yeah, highly enjoyable. Um, you know, it was the, bu the build-up to the game was pretty much like a, uh, like a semi-final, to be honest. We had a new coach, uh, new owners, uh, massive crowd. It was a blockbuster game for round one, so it was a bit strange. And um, 
but yeah, highly enjoyed it and uh, looking forward to getting out there against Cronulla. Um, you know, we've got a lot of improvement in us and uh, we're training pretty hard and uh, want a good performance against the Sharks. I'm glad you mentioned that. New coach, uh, new facilities, plenty of money up there. I'm used to the Newcastle Knights being the Steel City, getting down in the gutter and rumbling. Have you noticed a little bit of a change up there now? There's a little bit blocked, but, um, you know, the culture still exists. Uh, that's what it's all about. And, um, but, yeah, I guess we're on a, an even playing field now with everyone with uh, the facilities and things. But, uh, as you know, that, that gets you only so far. It's up to the players now. Um, you know, the coach is doing his bit, and it's up to us boys and as a group uh, to get, get the job done and uh, win as many games as we can. Danny, you've done everything in the game. Uh, 220 games for Newcastle alone. I'm interested to see how nervous were you for that game despite all that football under your belt? Yeah, very nervous. Um, you know, like I said before, we had the, the big crowd there. We had the makings of a, you know, a, a good game. But in saying that, we knew we were underdone a little bit with, um, with the polish that we wanted to put on it during the game. Um, our fitness levels were great, and that's probably what kept us in the game. We're a bit rusty with the ball, but uh, uh, looking forward to getting back out there on, on Sunday and uh, hopefully improving on a few areas. I'm looking forward to Sunday. This is going to be a mighty clash in the number nines. Uh, Isaac Deguiz, to me, looks to be fit, looks to be back in form. Uh, you're wearing, well, he's wearing your old jumper, and then now you're wearing his old jumper. That's going to be a perler. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's part of football these days. You know, players uh, chopping and changing. But, uh, you know, Isaac, he had a great couple of th three years up here with players, players, and highly uh, respected amongst the playing group here. So, uh, you know, he'll, he'll have a good night, uh, good afternoon out down there at the Shark Park. Danny, you had a couple of years over there in England. How important was it for you to come over or come back home and finish your business playing in the NRL? Yeah, well, you know, once you leave a place, you never think you're going to come back, and um, that was that was my views. Uh, I thought I'd left for for good, and um, to have the opportunity to come back, uh, finish off, you know, in my hometown, it's uh, it's pretty special. So uh, I wanted to get through that pre-season, train as hard as I could, and. Be, be available for as many games as I can for this year and um, you know I just really enjoying being around the group and um, being a part of the club that's heading in the right direction. Danny we spoke to you while you were in England last year about the prospects of coming back and obviously you've been keeping a close eye on the NRL and particularly the Knights. Does it surprise you coming back just how even this competition is right across the board? Yeah it's, it's all enjoyable sitting back especially when you play the first game and of uh, the week like we did last week and, and you, you watch so much footy and you're just amazed at the talent, um, the e evenness of the, uh, the groups, uh, the playing teams and, you know, the, the golden points and there's not much in it and, uh, you know, you look at the, the competition, no one's ever gone back to back and, uh, you know, the Eagles will be out this, this year to do the, do the right thing there. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a, a pleasure to be a part of the NRL and so much enjoyed my time over there at Super League. Uh, you know, it was a lot, lot relaxing, a lot more relaxing than it is here You're under the, the blowtorch a bit, but, uh, you know, that's one part of it I'm going to enjoy this year as well. Well, my favourite memory of State of Origin so far is uh, Danny Badira smashing uh, Webke with it on a kickoff when you're the captain for New South Wales. Any chance of playing State of Origin again, mate? Are you pretty keen or what? Uh, yeah, box, I think a, a few boxes have to be ticked for me to get a, a run there. Um, I just want to play as consistent as I can. I'm, I'm not going to count myself out, but uh, you know, probably a couple of hookers will probably have to fall over before I get a start. But uh, I want to just be as consistent as I can. And um, if the opportunity arises, I'm a, a pretty proud New South Welshman. And um, you know, if, the, if I have to, I'd love to play. And uh, of course. I noticed, Danny, it's still raining. What's new at the, in the backdrop there behind you? Have you seen one day of sun since you got back from England, or have you brought this weather with you? Mate, am I in Newcastle? I think I'm still in, in England, up the <laughs> gloomy north. But, uh, no, it's been a bit of a rough summer, hasn't it? But, um, you know, I'm never taking anything for, anything for granted, especially once I've been living over there. And, um, you know, you've still got a pretty good lifestyle over here, everyone. Well, Danny, it's great to see you back playing rugby league in the NRL. Hope you have a great season. We'll catch up with you throughout it. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks. Danny Baderas from the Newcastle Knights, back where he belongs. <laughs> hey, uh, Kurt Goodley's yes, here. Please. And Kurt, uh, disappointing result last week for you guys. But Wayne Bennett's been there now, what, three or four months? Uh, you've been under his guise. What's changed for Newcastle with the great man there? Uh, yeah, last Thursday. It was good playing on a Thursday night for something, something different to kick the year off, but uh, didn't get the result in the end. But, uh, it's been a big off-season with Wayne and um, our head trainer, Jeremy, who's put us through the paces. But, um, yeah, hopefully a lot, of, a lot more discipline in our team this year. And... A lot more consistency, I think. Yeah. Um, it doesn't matter in, in Wayne's teams whether you're most skillful or the most straight up and down player. He expects everyone to 
um, you know, have a real good dig yep. and know your job and do it as best as you can. So hopefully so, some good things to see this week. And the Newcastle fans are, are probably expecting miracles early, but he's got to settle in and uh, get the team playing the way he wants. So it might take a few weeks. Yeah, well, we've, got, we've got plenty of new players. We've got a few guys back who used to play with us, Bedsy and Tamana and Cade, and um, Darius is new to the team. So hopefully through the year it uh, progresses pretty well and, and builds... Um, a um, little bit each, each game as it comes along. All right, thanks for joining us on the show tonight, Kurt Gidley there. Now look, uh, last week uh, we saw our first that moment for the year and it was the great, it was the great Benji Marshall in the 2005 Grand Final. This week Gus Gould presents another that moment with someone very special on this panel. The 1997 Grand Final at the Sydney Football Stadium was a promoter's dream. The fairy tale team, the Newcastle Knights playing in their first ever Grand Final up against the heavyweights the team that everyone loves to hate, Manny Warringa. There was already great rivalry between the two clubs. The build-up to the game was intense, and this spilled over onto the field. And there's a punch-up, Carroll and Harrigan. Carroll. Harrigan goes in on top of him again. With a minute left on the clock, it seemed right that the scores were locked at 16 points all. At this stage, Newcastle were in good field position as they worked towards the winning score. They positioned their halfback Andrew Johns perfectly, fired the pass back for the drop goal that would hopefully give them Premiership glory. Andrew Johns, here it is! E oh, knocked down by Manley. Six and all tackles! Just when everyone expected Newcastle to work the play back to the middle of the field for another shot at field goal, we were dealt a moment we will never forget. 21 metres away! It does not get any better than that. It's a fairy tale. No doubt they're dancing in the streets of Newcastle right now. Newcastle weeping, weeping, tears of jubilation. I don't know what made Andrew Johns pick up that ball and head off down a narrow short side like that at that stage of the game. I just know that it took everyone by surprise, including Manly. Grand final gone. I remember the scenes as the Newcastle players swamped Albert. I can remember big Paul Harrigan running around the field crying, celebrating to his fans in the grandstands. But my major thought was with Andrew Johns and why he did what he did at that particular point in time. I guess only he can explain. I'm just glad that he did it. Thanks, Gus. Excellent work. Very, very nice. Keep them coming, champ. Can you explain it? I mean, you know, 25, 30 seconds to go, you get the ball, you know, you, what am I going to do? You slip down the blind. Yeah, i got no idea, Fat. Um, <laughs> you know, I was in dummy half, I looked up and, and Hopper was at marker and uh, I was reading his body language and he was uh, looking into my brother, who okay. Matthew was going to do a field goal and uh, part of me thought, well, I'm not, not going to let Matthew take all the glory. <laughs> So through the dummy and then yeah. Yeah, next is history. Through the dummy, put the step in, drew and then pass. And, and could you believe your eyes when Darren Albert just went straight through that I hole? I can't really remember, mate. It's that long ago, but yeah. it, it's all a blur, really. It, um, but, you know, watching it then, it, uh, it's probably the most special moment I had yeah. in 40. Goosebumps. But last week, Benji Marshall watched the, uh, the 2005 highlights and he got goosebumps. Do you feel a bit the same? Yeah, for sure, yeah. mate. It's an emotional time. It, it, was, it was such a special time in your footy career. All right. One of the great moments. And thanks to Gus for bringing it to us and Andrew. Welcome back to the show. Long time footy show fans and watchers would remember a segment called David and Goliath where David Middleton, who knows everything there is to know about rugby league, would take on a fan of rugby league and, and the winner would get um, be able to send money to charity and all that sort of thing. David's back in a segment called Guru and the Geek. Welcome, Dave. Thanks, buddy. Good to be here. Of course, Dave, you're still working on Channel 9. Magnificent stats, man. providing all the stats for the you commentary know all the team stats. and keeping the stats at the games. Yeah, yep. all that sort all of right. thing. We're, we're, Guru and the Geek, how do you feel you're, you're going to go? Oh, I'm a bit worried about the first geek. Well, <laughs> we, uh, we've got a very special person who is our first uh, geek. Please bring in the gimp. <laughs> Oh, 
welcome, Joey. I'm not happy with gimp or geek. <laughs> I, can happy? I can cop gimp, but not geek. <laughs> actually, I prefer gimp. Yeah, you've actually, uh, you've what actually, to a gimp? you've chosen uh, the subject tonight, and it is Nova Castrian number sevens, because you were, of course, uh, one of the best. Thank you. Along with Steve Lanane and a couple of others. Um, so uh, this is it. Nova Castro number seven. You have, oh, have you done some research? I was, a bit I'm of supposed bit of study. to put these uh, glasses you on. Put a, but put a, <laughs> there is no way. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. So we've got ten questions, ten points per question. Uh, at oh, the there's end a of, buzzer here. At the end of the can night. Can we put our hand on the thing? Yeah, yeah, you can do that if you like. You normally, you normally do. Um, at the end of the night, someone's, uh, one of you guys gets to donate $1,000 to Sydney Children's Hospital Red or the Jew. Brisbane Children's Hospital. So that should be good. And there's a special <laughs> <laughs> Nissan Navara power play as well, which is double points. Okay, ready to go? Yeah, geez. In the Newcastle Knights' first ever match back in 1988, who was the number seven? That would be you, Geek. <laughs> Gimp. Steve Walters. Steve Walters. That is correct. <laughs> and not, uh, not Steve Walters, the great Canberra hooker, but there was another Steve yeah, Walters, yeah. and he was a, he was a pretty handy Good player fell. as well. Your last match, Andrew, was in round three, 2007. Where was that match played, and what was the final score? Oh, it was played in Canberra. Yes. And no fault of myself, we got hammered. Yes. <laughs> That's it. And the score? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. 48 18 or something? I don't know. 48 18? Did you say 48 18? Yes. Well done. That's, that's good. <laughs> Since uh, Joe, is that working? Guru? <laughs> so, <laughs> Since Joey retired, how many number sevens have Newcastle had? They've had seven. seven they have had seven. Sevens. <laughs> Excellent. Can you, can you actually name them? Do you know them? Uh, I think I can. Yeah. Um, you, you got Tyrone Roberts, Ryan Stig, yes. Kurt Gidley, Jared Mullen. Yes. Uh, uh, Scott Duro, yes. Luke Walsh. And, and there's uh, one you can't possibly get. Marvin Caruana. That's played. him. That's Caruana. unbelievable. <laughs> Three sets. Three sets. Are you serious? Three sets. But would you have got Marvin Caruana? No. Nah. In what year did Newcastle win the Nissan Sevens pre-season tournament? Uh, 1991. Is correct. Yeah. Okay, what round year and against whom was Joey's first grade debut? Uh, round 6, 1993, Gold Coast yeah. Chargers. Well, How do you know that? Seriously. You, <laughs> you, probably don't, you probably can't even remember that. I had no idea. No. So, I had absolutely no idea. Buzz is working, Joey? Huh? Buzz is working. Yeah, it's working. <laughs> it was on the Gold Coast. Do you remember anything about your career at all? No. <laughs> remember the bad things. <laughs> we, we all remember the bad things. When Joey made his debut that day, who was the run on number seven? Oh. Jason Martin. Yes, it was. Jason Martin. I saw him in a story in the paper the other day about yeah, it. Yeah, He's yeah. living up at North Queensland North now. Queensland looking for a job. <laughs> he was a good little player. Another good fella. Now. What's the most number of points Andrew scored in an NRL match? 34. 34. Can you tell us how he scored it? He's got Canberra. Uh, yep. He's got four tries and 16 and uh, eight you, goals. No, nine, nine goals. Nine goals. Nine, nine goals. goals. Well yeah. done. Have you got videos of me in your drawers? I, should know. <laughs> I know some people that have. <laughs> this is a Nissan Navara power play question. It's a word game. You remember when we used Dave's days work? with us for years and we'd be on the drink after games and we'd play this game where I'd say, uh, you'd take the last letter of say a band, I'd say kiss and you'd have to come up with another band. So I'd say kiss and you'd say? Oh, super trap. I would say the police and you'd say? Um, ELO. Exactly, so that's how the game works. So we're going to play that now, right, this is a point. Because <laughs> everyone's involved. You guys, you're all involved. Okay, It's going to go man. from Joey Can't to wait. Dave, Beauty. then to Slats, Back to David and so on, all right? Let's okay. go. Joey, you start. With, uh, what? The subject is yep. current NRL players. Right up. For 20 points. Well, I'll go Kirk Gidley. Okay, I'll go uh, Dean Young. Dean Me? Young. Goodwin. Yep. Matt Bronx. Goodwin. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take any Goodwin. Ted, Bronx. <laughs> Dave? Uh, New Asala. 
Kurt. What's that, A? <laughs> That's a. That'd yes, be A, mate. Asatasi. Yeah. Yes. Asatasi. Nice. Inglis. Gordon. Uh, Stanley. Uh, Yao Ye. <laughs> Hodges. Slater. Oh, oh. Someone else. Ready. <laughs> this is going good. Yep, keep going. Go <laughs> this could go no, no. Why? There's no more white. Yeah, right. stumped you. There's only two guys there. That's it. Game over. Oh, yeah. Game over. Oh, yeah. Game over. Oh, yeah. Game over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I should get, I should get double that. If Gordon Tallis outsmarts David Milton, that's a miracle. I know my stats. That's a miracle. <laughs> okay, well done, Gordon. In 1991, which halfback joined the Knights after being sacked in 1990 by the Dragons for disciplinary reasons? Steve Lane. Steve Lane is correct. <laughs> he was uh, suspended for 20 weeks for eye gouging. Greg Alexander. Final question. All right. Uh, Joey, by some miracle, played two 2020 cricket matches for New South Wales. What was, the, what was his highest score <laughs> and against which team? I know this one. Yeah. I know this one because I remember him, I think he was bowled or, or bowled against Hilfen House. It was yeah, Tasmania. He hit me in the head. It was Tasmania. Yeah. And uh, hot, top score was nine. Yeah. You got nine. That many. <laughs> It would be with Joey. Thanks, Slade. Now, not surprisingly, David Middleton's the winner. Well done, Dave. Thousand dollars to City Children's Hospital. Well done, excellent work. To Guru and the Geek, that's week one of Guru and the Geek. The Gimp. And, and the Gimp. <laughs> Please say Andrew John's David Middleton for us. Now, by the way, um, the, the geeks, whoever the geek is in future, doesn't go away empty-handed. These beautiful watches from Maxim, fantastic. Oh, I they were from Bali. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Look, mate, you're, no, kill I'm joking. you're I'm killing joking, us. Maxim. You're absolutely That's killing scary. us. Fantastic watches. I've never seen a better watch in my life. It's fantastic. Tells the time correctly. And everything. It's fantastic. <laughs> Maxim, <laughs> go out and get one. They look good. Yep, fantastic. We'll take a break. Come back. More of the footy show after this. Yeah, well, also on the list, of course, is uh, the great Malcolm Reilly. They don't come much tougher than him. Mad Dog, and you were coached by him, as was Joey. I'll get him to say a few words on him as well. Yeah, no, it was an honour to be coached by such a legend of the game. And, and for me, you know, he, he's arguably the, the greatest man that I, I've met, uh, apart from my father. He was a, a tough player. He was just, um, just demanded respect. I suppose the best thing about him was he was competitive, you know. I remember uh, one day at training, we had this drill where we used to have to swim in the swimming pool, hold your breath and go swim, try to swim 50 metres underwater and uh, no one could do it. And Malcolm was very competitive and he got filthy that we weren't, uh, I suppose, tough enough to do it. So he was in his suit, he was looking pretty dapper actually, took it off, jumped in in his undies and he held his breath and he went all the way to the end, 50 metres, and he got up and his head looked like a beetroot. I thought he was going to need Malcolm out. <laughs> Mate, just mentally tough, you know. He would not give up, he was unrelenting and he just put a duty on you as a player to go out there and play tough. If you didn't, you just couldn't look the guy in the eye and uh, he was a great man and, uh, you know, because of him we won our first premiership at the Knights. Yeah, I saw a bit of him play in the very early days and, uh, ooh, how tough was he? Joey, of course, uh, you know Malcolm really pretty well. Yeah, I didn't get to see. That's the first time I've seen him play. Um, well, I echo Dugues to sort of just the most competitive guy I've ever met in my life. Probably the, the greatest leader of men I've met. Um, yeah, great coach, special guy. And, you know, led us to that 97 grand final. Well, the Knights arrived in Cronulla to see a big crowd already starting to build. We saw plenty of people at Leichhardt last week expect the same at Shark Park for their first home game. There's the captain, Kurt Gidley. Alex McKinnon is a talking point because he was meant to come off the bench. Uate and Nagama will try and light up in the back line. But I mentioned McKinnon. He's earned a starting place. You can see him there in the back row and jumper number 17. Forcing Richie Fayoso, or Zeb Taylor it is, back to the interchange bench in jumper number 12. So just a minor change from Wayne Bennett. Yeah, and Alex McKinnon, who of course has, has uh, gone, gone north to Newcastle with Wayne Bennett. He's got a lot to offer, a really good kid. Along with Joel Edwards, I think, you know, the two redhead boys, they're really fiery. They they really add some punch to the team off the bench. They did last week, but Edwards in a starting role. I'm really interested to, to see how he goes. The Newcastle Knights warming up on Shark Park. Perhaps strangely, it is the visiting team warming up on the field and the home team, the Sharks, electing to warm out out the back. Gary Belcher, is that back to front? 
Oh, no, I think the Sharks are just saving themselves. First home game, warm up out the back, and crowds will give them a big roar when they uh, when they take the field for the first time this afternoon. Well, let's go to Newcastle. One stat that surprised me during the week is that only once in their history have they lost their opening two games of the season. That was in 2005, and a proud record for that club. Yeah, yeah, that is a proud record. It's, um, I'm, I'm sure not too many clubs would, would have that record, and one they'd, they'd want to hold on to. I, I just think, you know, Wayne Bennett has got other things to think about than, than stats and how many games they've won or lost. I, I think he's, he's really, uh, he's got a team, a good team there, but there's a fair bit of work to do with him and uh, to mould them into playing the style of footy that he wants them to play is going to take a bit of time. Yeah, here they are leaving their warm-up and uh, set for some final instructions from Wayne Bennett. They are on the sixth line of Premiership betting at $11. They've recruited very well in the off-season and one of the men to make the arrival in the off-season was Danny Badiris and uh, we have seen Danny Badiris return from Leeds, play in the season opener. He had to play the entire first half and he also spoke to Gary Belcher a short time ago. Well, Betsy, you've had one game back in the NRL. Has it, has it changed much in your three years away? Yeah, the NRL's got a great feel about it. Uh, I think all the fans are right behind it. They're talking about it. The game's in a positive light and uh, that's the biggest thing I'm picking up on and um, it's great to be a part of it and be an NRL player at the minute. And what about the Knights? Uh, some changes, of course, with the new coach and, and some new players since you were there. You, you, you noticing that? Yeah, a lot of changes, obviously. Uh, well documented. Um, last week was like a bit of a circus, to be honest. To be honest. It's a uh, new stadium, uh, new coach, obviously new owner, and the list goes on. So it's good. I think the season can start for us today. Uh, we're away from home, um, getting a bit of a routine and uh, a bit of pressure on our back. So uh, we're looking forward to it. And what about coming here? Never an easy assignment at Shark Park? No, of course not. Uh, we're lucky the, the sun's shining today. We usually come down here on a, on a dreary Saturday night, but uh, oh, we're expecting a, you know, a, a real tough game. You know, they, I don't think they get many of these uh, Sunday afternoon games and the crowd has turned up and uh, they're real competitive outfits, so it's going to be a tough game for us. At 34 years of age, Danny Badiris has provided us with many highlights over the years and despite the fact that he's well into the 30s, he's being spoken about as an origin candidate again in 2012. What do you reckon, Gary? Oh, look, I'm, I'm sure he'd be up to it, Matt. He's, uh, he's a wonderful player. He's been a wonderful talent. It's a pity that he had to go overseas for three years. and I'm sure a lot of Knights people uh, regret the fact that he left. I think he, he, he wasn't far off off his best um, the other night. In fact, on a couple of times there, he was, he was ahead of his teammates. They really didn't read the, the fact that he got out of dummy half and he jumped out pretty well and had no support with him. So I reckon that would have been spoken about this week at training. How do you expect Wayne Bennett to use him today? Well, he played that first 40, and um, I guess it was uh, out, of, out of necessity to try to get you know get his fitness back. And they were rotating their other forwards a fair bit. But I, I really thought Matt Hilda might have come on. You know, in that in that last 10 minutes of the first half, he does add a lot of punch, uh, a, a real lot of um, impact off the bench in defence, but certainly can use the footy as well and run the footy well. So I, I would expect probably 30 out of. Um, um, Baderis and then Hilda come on and we'll see uh, Danny Baderis again in the second half. And a quick word on Cade Snowden, a Newcastle junior who played two seasons of the Knights, the last four at the Sharks. He's back against his old teammates for the first time today. And the fans are going to let him know it too. Because there was that uh, yeah, that controversy around his uh, his late signing for the Knights. Um, and he's got a bit of work to do as well. I think he's going to cop it up front from the uh, the Sharks forwards, no doubt at all. But he's a big boy, he can handle that. And, and, and uh, you know, he's got a big role to fill this afternoon trying to get them on the front foot. Gary Belcher, we're looking forward to this game. Enough from us for the time being for a final word it's Mark Braybrook and Michael Ennis Thank you very much Matt and Gary a tough one here this afternoon they're always very difficult to beat at home Cronulla up against the Newcastle side that uh, will need to improve from their performance last week against the Dragons how do you see it going? Yeah I think obviously for Feeder and Gibbs are a huge loss for the Sharks here today but on their home track uh, there's a good crowd building here I think they're going to be up for the occasion and uh, you know, for me, I think the real keys are for, for the Newcastle Knights will be Jared Mullen today. And if he can, can take control of this game, uh, then I think the Knights will get home in a tight one. Well, both teams were beaten in Golden Point last week in round one in heartbreaking circumstances for both teams. Always tough being beaten in the first round, even tougher in Golden Point. Who will come out on top today? We'll find out very shortly. NRL Sunday coming to you from a, a sun-drenched Toyota Stadium on a beautiful afternoon in Sydney. Will it be the Sharks or the Knights? We'll find out shortly. Matt Russell, Gary Belcher and Brett Kamala to bring you all the action.
That is it. Time off. Time over. And Newcastle, 18, beat Cronulla, 6. They finished the game with 15 men. Costigan with a calf injury. And Kurt Gidley with a real shoulder concern. Wes Nagama, very strong for the Knights, who have survived the heat, who have survived the Cronulla Sharks, and have enjoyed their first win of 2012. And the Sharks, after looking so good at times against the Tigers, just unable to come up with points until very late in this game. The last play of the game was the try to Ben Pomeroy. And Brett Kamali is standing by with Chris Houston. Yeah, here with Chris Houston. Chris, how important was it for you guys to win today? Yeah, mate, we, we uh, didn't start well last week, but we didn't get the two points. So it was um, yeah, crucial we got them today and um, yeah, one, uh, one, one all. One all, yeah. And obviously today you, you got in front, you had a few injuries, but was it built on defence? Was that what the focus at halftime was? Yeah, when we lost a couple of players there, we knew we were going to do it tough today. And Wayne did our interchange well and we just had to, had to dig in there. Luckily we got some early points and just hung in. Can you let us know a little bit the change from Wayne Bennett to Rick Stone? What has been the major change for the Newcastle Knights? Oh, mate, there's, there's been a lot, but we're still playing the game, the same game of footy there. So he's just got a different spin on thing and he just wants us to work on our discipline. A couple of times today we didn't do that, but we're working hard on it and I think we're improving. A win's a win, mate. Well done. Yeah, we'll take that one. Thanks. Thanks, Greg. Yes, a disappointing day for the Sharks, but a performance to celebrate from Newcastle. They lost their captain, but they didn't lose the game going on to win 18-6. A break on NRL Sunday and then back to wrap up. A wonderful performance from the Newcastle Knights. Eighteen six, three tries to one. The kick is perfect as well. What about the Knights? I mentioned their goal line defence. Is that what stands out for you from their performance? Oh, absolutely. Their right side defence in particular, but on, on the try line, came up with a lot of really big plays. I thought Wes Nagama and, and Co were were very good on the right. Look, I got. A, I said during the call, shabby defence for a period of about 15 minutes in the first half, and should have been well and truly behind on the scoreboard. But they fixed that, and that's why coaches love half time breaks when you when your side is struggling. And what about from Shane Flanagan's perspective? Yes, they didn't score points. Is that what he's most upset about? I think the way they crumbled in that second half, early in the second half, and they allowed the, the Knights to get some points on straight away to go to that 12-0 lead, and then they just didn't mount any pressure. They didn't get to their... I can, I can barely remember them getting to a kick. It's certainly putting any pressure on the Knights and getting up the other end of the field. OK, Brett Kamali is standing by with our man of the match. The $1,000 BMW man of the match is Wes Nogama. Wes, scrappy, but a good win in the end? Yeah, it was, mate. It was a very scrappy affair. We lost, um, lost kids early, early in the first half, so uh, credit to the boys. Uh, everyone sort of, sort of covered for each other and we got for the 80. Wayne Bennett, can you just give us an insight? Different than Rick Stone, what have you learnt the most out of him? Oh, mate, he brings, he brings his own thing to the team, you know. Uh, obviously, we had a tough pre-season. sort of put us in good stead for, for these sort of games. Our fitness levels are up and... Just the basics, just completing sets, you know, and just getting through the sets, good kick chase, and just looking out to turn, turn up for each other indeed. Well, thank you, Wes. Take the check, mate, and a lovely BMW wallet. All the best on that. Well, thanks, Fox Sports, and uh, thanks, BMW. <laughs> Yeah, Wes Nagama, he was very good today, getting through a mountain of work, uh, defensively very strong as well. Also ahead, night skipper Kurt Gidley, Gidley dislocates his shoulder, shoulder while Shane Flanagan fumes. Good evening, I'm Rob Canning, NRL first up. And Newcastle captain Kurt Gidley has suffered a serious shoulder injury during the night's win against the Sharks today. Cronulla coach Shane Flanagan frustrated by some questionable refereeing decisions and a limp performance from his side. Super Sunday in the Shire. Kurt Gidley lasted just five minutes dislocating his shoulder, tackling Todd Carney. Well, that's a massive concern, isn't it? You know, so like the before and after that, I can't really do really much more detail. Jared Mullen took hold of the playmaking reins and the Novocastrians opened their account. Isaac de Goyes carved through his old club, creating a golden chance. And the ball for Tagatizzi is dropped. 
Todd Carney cracked it as the Sharks butchered several prime opportunities. Oh, Gardner couldn't position himself and then drops it. The host losing the plot in attack and defence. What was Cronulla's defence thinking? 12 0 up Newcastle were rubbing Cronulla's face in it, and this didn't help. Junior Sow. He's always lost it. Awarded a try, placing more heat on under fire officials. Oh, you tell me he doesn't have to control the footy to score a try. You don't have to have downward pressure, and that's what he had. Shane Flanagan furious after the insipid performance. Oh, it's the worst performance I thought we've put in for us since I've been involved with the team. Liam Cox, 10 News. Sharks fans muscled up, as did Ben Pomeroy on former teammate Kate Snowden. Gidley was an early casualty, popping a shoulder, his season in doubt. Wairuate didn't need his speed to score first for the Knights. This controversial Newcastle match winner will cause plenty of debate. Referee Tony Archer ruling Junior Sow had been stripped of the ball, but then regained it to force it down over the try line. He doesn't have to control the footy to score a try. You don't have to have downward pressure, and that's what he had. The Sharks finally scored in the 78th well, minute, but it was pretty ugly park, and could have been disputed. At Shark Park, Kurt Gidley took on Todd Carney and paid the price. A serious shoulder injury also putting his season in jeopardy. The Knights carried on without their skipper. Then sat back as the Sharks bombed try after try. Isaac de Goyce created numerous opportunities. It was cruel teasing of the Cronulla fans who saw Carney below his best and their team out of luck again with the refs. This fly always lost it. It squeezed out. Junior South's try infuriated the Cronulla captain and summed up the match. Well, you tell me he doesn't have to control the footy to score a try. You don't have to have downward pressure and that's what he had. The final word from coach Shane Flanagan. Oh, it's the worst performance I thought we've put in for us since I've been involved with the team. Juro Sen, 7 News. A mystery virus has ruled Parramatta captain Nathan Hindmarsh out of tonight's clash with the Warriors. The veteran Eel spent a night in hospital on a drip. Arrival skipper's doing it tougher. Newcastle's Kurt Gidley having scans today on his dislocated shoulder that could spell the end of his season. Until you get the scan, you don't really know whether it's just season or whether it's just a couple of weeks. So, um, yeah, we're all sort of feeling for Kurt at the moment. At best, Gidley is still expected to be sidelined for at least a month. Coming up next, a former great explains why the Dragons have no reason to complain as Wayne Bennett continues to poach their stars. Former Dragons tough guy Gordon Teller says his old club has no right to whinge as Wayne Bennett tears the heart out of his former team. And Talis has warned, there will be more pain to come. This was Wayne Bennett's finest moment in the red and white, delivering the Dragons their first competition win in 30 years. But now, bit by bit, he's picking the eyes out of his old club and the Dragons have to wear it. Dragons feel bad when they poach Tim Moulton or did they, you know, when they got Darius Boyd or, you know, other clubs. You know, look, it's happened in the past and it's going to keep on happening. The clubs do it to each other. And don't expect Wayne to apologise. Every week and every month for the rest of this season there'll be a drama with a player leaving the club. So let's not, let's not use the boat, Scott, as an issue for Newcastle or anybody else, OK? Been going on for the last five years. It's been diabolical. You know that. I know that. Given Bennett's history, Talis is predicting there'll be more Dragons heading north. When he left the Broncos, Mick Guinness left. There was about five left. Ben Hannon, so... Um, coaches obviously want to take the players that they think can do the job. And the Knights will be anxiously awaiting for the results of Kurt Gidley's scans and his injured shoulder. And Knights skipper Kurt Gidley will find out tomorrow if his season's over after he had scans on his injured shoulder. Patrick Mollahan, 7 News. Bo Scott, another cork in the thigh. He needs to have a... carrying his wallet? Well, well, let's... Seriously, <laughs> okay, I didn't know let, let's move to that. Now, that, we want to talk about something juicy. Here's one, and that's uh, Bo Scott. Friday night, OK, on the, on the eve of their big game against the Bulldogs, Bo Scott, Bo Scott comes out and 12 months in advance has said he's joining Wayne Bennett, like a lot of other Dragons players have done, up at Newcastle. Uh, this is, Well, it was put to Wayne Bennett yesterday in the press conference about it. This is what he had to say. Oh, don't get in that path with me, will you? OK? Every week and every month for the rest of this season, there'll be a drama with a player leaving the club. 
So let's not let's not use the boat, Scott, as an issue for Newcastle or anybody else, OK? Been going for the last five years. It's been diabolical. You know that. I know that. So don't pick on us about Bo Scott. No, we just do what every other club's done, mate. We're, you know, you're either in it or, you know, and if you're not in it, you're going to miss out because there's no one to recruit in September. Yeah, that, hey, that, I mean, you can't argue with that. But I've got to say, boys, the point is... OK, like last year we saw a situation, mate, where the Drag Dragons fans have got the, uh, in Wayne we trust. At the moment, they've got every right to feel that their club has been dismantled. By Wayne? Um, by Wayne. Yeah, look. I mean... That's that, up to that, the club to get their roster in shape there, mate. You know? Yeah. Whether it's Wayne, whether it's Tim Sheens, <clears throat> whether it's Jeff Toovey, the rules are there to say we can go out and communicate and negotiate with a player at any stage now. Yeah. The, the rules state that. Um, now it's up to the club to keep their roster in shape and keep the keep who they want, whether they're a young young guy coming through or it's a senior player. Um, you know, and I don't. I think it was a situation where I don't think St George could get to the level of money that was offered to uh, Bo. If you're Steve Price, though, Ricky, like I mean, what a tough job for him. He's just losing players now. He's lost. I mean, uh, Bo Scott's just not a normal player. He's one of the cornerstone players for him, and mate, he signed 12 months in advance. What do you do? What do you do with Bo Scott? Well, you do what the what are the Warriors are doing with James Maloney? Like, then when he signed to the Roosters, that was even longer. You yeah, just got to get months. on with your job. You know what yeah. I mean? I don't I don't like it, but all the coaches, every club, play under the same rules. I'd like to see a window, right yeah. in the middle of the season, where there's a four day. We go to a big convention centre. All the clubs can trade and do all that kind of stuff, and everybody's fair game, right there and then. Um, does a draft work? Well, I'm not too sure because everybody knew that blokes and the other Cowboys' name. Ablett, yeah. Every, everybody knew he was going to the Gold Coast, so it's a worst that's kept right. secret. Worst there's, mate, like, there's no secret in sport. So it's not a perfect, but that's what we all play under. Everybody's done it. When Parramatta signed Chrissy Sandell, all the fans were walking around happy because they got him. South fans were disappointed. Of course. But then they were excited about a young Adam Reynolds. So fans get over it quick. Good. Players, but it can't keep on happening. Can, can I ask you, Dukes, yep. right, uh, what's the feeling up in Newcastle at the moment? Mate, they're excited because yeah. of Wayne Bennett. You know, he, he's got a history of being successful and, you know, there's an air of excitement. So I think the only time Wayne's going to come under pressure up there is if they don't start to win. Mm. Um, and there aren't a lot of local players in the team. You know, a number of years ago, there's a lot of backlash about Brian Smith bringing a lot of Polynesian players and players from outside of Newcastle. And we all know what happened there. It ended in tears. But uh, Wayne Bennett's a terrific coach. And I'm sure that, um, you know, as long as he's winning up there, everyone's going to be happy. To get, big results, yeah, to get big results, though, you've got to be ruthless. And whether this yeah. is a ruthless decision or not, but you're Ricky, going to make these decisions. But Ricky, you want to win with the Newcastle local juniors. And for more reports, Tinkler wants to build like an empire and build a club that's going to be successful in 10 years' time. You don't want to go buy premierships because everybody complains if you buy them because then those guys are going to go and all these young kids that were there are going to be playing at other clubs. I understand that. So like, you want to build a culture where all the kids are coming through. I understand you? that, but mate, you've got to look at... That might be a position there where he does need some senior people. I mean, I know he's got a huge... A huge opinion of Bo Scott, yes. and when Bo yeah. Scott doesn't play for St George, St George are half the football team, wanting toughness and also probably in shape. I mean, they pushed him out to the right centre now. Um, he knows what he's getting with Bo Scott. Unfortunately, he's come from the Dragons, and he knows what some of those individuals offer a team. I think that's an important aspect. Um, young McKinnon, he knew how good he'd play. Young McKinnon was, which and he he's took a Newcastle with him from Newcastle. Junior. McKinnon, yeah, bringing yeah. him back home. Uh, but you know, it's interesting times up there. There's obviously a lot of pressure on Bennett, and obviously Bennett's walked into Newcastle. They had a look around and said, "There's not enough here." But uh, look, I don't like it either. I, look, I'm all for you know playing with me squad, and that's what we've come from, all of us as players. You know, you you, you got your team, you feel as though you're going to be together forever, um, and you play for each other, you yeah. live with each other. Yeah, that's 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 rugby league. Unfortunately, today it's a different it's a different game. It's a professional game, professional yeah. decisions, and unfortunately, the people that get hurt are the fans. Bo Scott's decision to get out has fans wondering if more players will follow Wayne Bennett to Newcastle. Ask Wayne. I don't know. <laughs> While fans are angry at Scott and their former coach, not so Dragons players who say no rules have been broken and they can understand when teammates move to secure their future. There's no hard feelings from, from a player's point of view. It, it, it is business. Um, the clubs run it like it is and you've got to look after your family. Oh, obviously the salary cap's doing its job. Everyone has to, has to leave. I'd leave Brisbane.
Patrick Mullahan, 7 News. Now, Friday night also sees the Knights at home to the Broncos. Newcastle will be without their injured skipper, Kurt Gidley, whom we'll talk with shortly. But first, here's how the teams line up, Lock. Yeah, it should be an interesting game of football. This uh, back in the side, Ryan Stig for Kurt Gidley. Uh, now, this kid was going to be a superstar uh, last year. Uh, we saw a lot of him, so he should settle in there. The other halfing partner there is Jared Mullen. Now, he's got to take more control in the game now that Kurt Gidley won't be there. But I expect the Knights to bounce back uh, after last week. But I still think the Brisbane Broncos will win this game. I think they'll play a lot better. Uh, a couple of positional changes here, and, and uh, the, the Broncos side lines up, and they're a pretty good side. Hodges out there in the centres. Petro Sivanasiva back in the side. Sam Friday. Now he moves back to the second row. A dangerous player on the right hand side. I'm sure that all the outside backs will love having him there. One on ones, he can get the offload. Uh, and the Brisbane Broncos. Should be a great game of football this one, but I think the Brisbane Broncos will get the cash. Yeah, it should be another cracker. Well, I tell you, someone who Newcastle will miss, obviously, is their captain, Kurt Gidley. Uh, with his shoulder injury, he's been good enough to join us tonight. G'day, Kurt. Thanks for your time. <laughs> Mate, very well. Now, when you did it, we heard all sorts of things. You're going to be out for a year. You're going to be out for a week. Three to five weeks is sort of what we've been hearing. What is the latest? Yeah, but it's like, it's, um, I mean, everyone, I think, jumps to all conclusions. And, um, yeah, the year was, that was never, that was all speculation that I was going to be out for a year. And, it's a similar injury to what I've done almost 12 months ago. Um, uh, just a bit of a problem with my shoulder, but it's, feeling, it's, it's improved a lot just over the past four days and it'll hopefully only be um, a couple of weeks. Gee, Kurt, your, uh, your club's in good hands when an international like yourself um, is not available and a player like Junior Sow is not in the 17. Now, he played last week. Is he available, Junior Sow, for this game or is he just simply not in the 17? Um, mate, he's, he's, he's available for... You know, he's not injured at the moment, so... Uh, yeah, we've got we've got plenty of numbers, which is we've got plenty of depth at the moment, and um, yeah, so Junior's missed out unfortunately. Mate, can I talk to you about Jared Mullen? Now we saw him in the first round against St George Illawarra score a beautiful individual try. Not many other players in the competition could score that tr sort of try. Mate, how come he's so hot and cold? When are we going to see the best of him? And are we going to see the best of him with Wayne Bennett as the coach at Newcastle now? Yeah, I think so, mate. And look, only it was only 12 months ago that I think Mullen had probably started the best year he's, he's played at the start of last year and. There was talk that he, that he could be playing Origin again, and uh, mate, I, I always say to Muller that he's the best part of his game is his running game. He's he's quick off the mark, he's strong, and he's a good ball carrier. And uh, I think the more times he does that for us at Newcastle, the better we're going to go. You would have been a lot happier too starting to this season when you look at the blokes at the back like Darius Boyd and Tamana Tahu. Finally, uh, we see Newcastle with a lot of strike now out in their backs. Yeah, mate, it's good. Um, yeah, we've been able to sign a few players in, in Tamara, who's come back to the club, and Denny Bideris, and um, a great signing, Darius Boyd, um, and, and Kate Snowden come back to the club. So, um, yeah, a few good signings, and it's, it's, um, it's been a work in progress over the past few years, I guess, but it's, it's great to have um, a bit of depth, like I said. Kurt, you've been at Newcastle for so long now. Wayne Bennett, just about everything can be said about Wayne Bennett heading to Newcastle has been said. But for a senior player like you and the captain, has, is there something he's done with you or pointed out or worked on your game specifically? Um, oh, I mean, probably the biggest change was, um, was back when, when Wayne first said he was going to come to the club, um, that I'd be moving from fullback to 5'8". And he was, you know, he was really confident that I could make that move in... Um, and, and I had all, all, all off-season right from November after getting an operation on my knee. Um, I had a, a plenty of time to work with, with the halves and, and with Jared to, to make sure um, that's, that's the best position for the team. And, I, and I'm happy with that and I'm comfortable with it. To me, that was always going to happen, Kurt. You seem to me a player that when the game's in the balance, you demand the ball and it looked like a natural fit. Are, are you enjoying it there? And also, I guess on the flip side of that, uh, Darius Boyd floated up six. Do you expect he could play in that position? Yeah, I mean, I'm... Uh, well, firstly, I, I enjoy playing in the halves. Um, I enjoyed fullback, but I also enjoy playing in the halves. I enjoy defending. I enjoy um, the hard work that goes into that and the amount of communication you've got to have with, with your centre and your back row of it. And, and I enjoy you know, doing the ball playing side of that. So, um, and, and Darb's obviously been there and coming to the club. He's, he's, um, you know, he's really handy, he's skillful, Darius is, and um, he's a great fullback, but he also slots in and um, and, he, and he plays a great fullback and you know, a bit of ball playing role as well. So I think me, me him and Jared and, and Denny, um, you know, we haven't been playing all together for, 
um, for a while, but hopefully it's a work in progress and we just keep on proving. Well, no one enjoys uh, playing the game like you, and I've never seen a bloke more dedicated come back as quick as, as you with your, with that injury that you've got. Is it fair to say that Newcastle are right on the money now with uh, with physio and treatment of all the players? Yeah, look, it's it's come a long way. Um, I mean, when I first started playing, on my first first grade game was, was 2001, and we, we've always been a struggling club where we haven't had a great deal of, of backing or, or finances, I suppose, and uh, we haven't had the facilities or, I suppose, the staff um, to, to back us up as, as players. And uh, we've really got that these days. We've got great facilities, um, training facilities and rehab and recovery and, and staff and full-time physio and massage. So, you know, it, as a player, it's, um, it's as good as we can get at the moment and, and that's why it's, it's, um, it's really important that us as players, it's, it's down to us now and um, we, we need to get the results on the field now because everything around us is set up and it's, um, it, it's a really good setup now and, and we need to get the results. We've got to say Hunter Stadium is now one of the best grounds in the world to watch footy. Unfortunately, you'll be with the spectators this weekend, Kurt, tomorrow night. Let's hope it's not for long. We can't wait to see you back. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks very much. Kurt Gidley, the Newcastle captain, and how they will miss him. Coming up next, Panthers coach Ivan Cleary joins us. This is the game plan. We'll see you shortly. The Knights failed again at home. This length of the field effort in the second half, a rare highlight against the Broncos. Brisbane too good in front of almost 25,000 Newcastle fans. I think that's what hurts them most of all. You just feel you let them down a little bit. And it wasn't flashy, but the Broncos were too strong for the Knights. There's a rocky road in front of us here right now. So it uh, takes a while. Jurosin, 7 News. Well, speaking of local boy done good, congratulations to you also, Joey. Uh, Friday night... Uh, well, the end of last week up in Newcastle. I was terrified what no, you're going to say. No, 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 no. no it's all good. All, all from the, from all of the Newcastle players who've played, they've narrowed down for the inaugural inductees into the mm. Hall of Fame up there, uh, down to ten, and you uh, you just scraped in into those those top that top ten, and some good company in there. You've got seven. Australian representatives, seven yeah. Premiership winners and nine Origin players. Yeah, so thanks, mate. No, that's good. So, Thank you. I, the only concern I've had, I was talking to Adam McDougall, who I'm pleased to say is on the roast again today, and Mark Hughes on Friday night. They said they must have been 11th <laughs> missing out on the top 10. But. Well, if it was for off-field entertainment, <laughs> Mark Hughes <laughs> would be number one. Well in. Uh, so, yeah, that'll be, uh, they'll uh, take that down to four players um, and at Western Suburbs Lees Club early April. And they will be the four players to go into the first Newcastle Hall of Fame. So congratulations to all concerned there. But uh, now welcoming our continuation of hookers as, as guest hosts, Danny Medeiros has joined us. Good to see you, Danny. Welcome home uh, after three years in the Super League. And uh, I guess the, the obvious question is, uh, in those three years coming back into the NRL, uh, is there much different? Yeah, Stella, it's a lot different. Um, you know, the speed of the game's obviously improved over here and uh, it's a lot cleaner. Uh, the rucks, um, you know, very quick. So, and defensively, I found myself for the last couple of weeks making a lot of tackles. So, um, no, that's changed a bit as well. OK, what about you? You got rid of that Yorkshire accent? Or? Yeah, my little daughter, she picked it up. She's, little, she's a little <laughs> English rose there for a minute, but uh, she's hanging around those Australian schools now, so that's knocked out of her. OK, all right, well, let's have a look at Friday night. It was a tough night for Newcastle. Not a game that rose to any great heights. I guess after 80 minutes, was it more frustration than anything else for the Newcastle side? Yeah, for the three games that we've played, I think the thing that's kept us in the game is probably the... Uh, our, um, our commit to, commitment to our defence and also uh, mm. our fitness. And um, we've been pretty, pretty shoddy with the ball and uh, our control at times is put under a lot of pressure. So we have to improve those areas. Well, with all due respect, probably the biggest surprise of the night was the fact that Brisbane actually did take some time to put you away because they, they, they were on top from fairly early on. Although this incident here with James McManus racing 95 metres, all of a sudden, despite the, the play going against you, you were back within two, so that must have, at that stage of the game, you thought, well, hang on, it's a good shot, good opportunity here. Yeah, without a doubt. I guess what's, what caught up with us in the end was the, the territory. Uh, we were fielding the ball back on our goal line and on under attacking kicks, and uh, by the time we put a kick in, we're just trying to find some ground, and we're under the pump most of the night, and as it told, uh, you know, they, they scored some good tries in the end, and, you know, the game was, was probably a fair indication, the score of the game. 
Well, there it is there, 24 points to 10. Glenn Hodges, Bill Gillette got tries. Peter Wallace, four from five. Uh, the two wingers for Newcastle, Uate and McManus, got their tries and the one conversion successful from Matt Hilda. On a pretty tough night for, for Newcastle up there, but um, Brisbane, they weren't at their best, but they certainly finished this game strongly and they, they look to be a real threat. What about Brisbane, Ben? You spoke backstage about their, their back row, Alex, Alex Glenn, Gillette, these sort of players. Yeah, I think uh, we got played off the park a bit in the forwards. I think the, their, uh, the punch that they got at the line, um, the ability and the athleticism of some of their players is just top notch. And um, I haven't played against that for a long time. And, um, you know, they're going to be around those sort of players for a lot of years to come and uh, representing futures for sure. Bedsy, uh, you've got Adam Cuthbertson playing your starting front row. Like, I see Adam Cuthbertson maybe as a, uh, a bench front row and he's an excellent back row. I think he's a great player, Adam Cuthbertson. I like the versatility he's got. Are you, are you strong enough up front? Are you competing with teams up front? I thought the first game Saints sort of come through is a little bit. Uh, Cronulla, um, sort of each way bet there. but. Yeah, I guess we're, I'm hearing the whispers around town and also in the papers and I think a lot of the journos are starting to jump on it that we're probably light up front and you're watching the games, we probably are. So um, that's up to the coach. It's probably, you know, everyone's rosters are all, all full up and um, there's not many floating around front rowers. So we've just got to make do at the moment and, um, you know, train hard, work work hard with each other and um, you know, I'm sure we'll get there. What about Mace? What about Willie Mason? You know, Willie's from up there, from Toronto. Is there room under the cap to, to sign Willie? Well, he fits the criteria, but that's the thing, Joe. I think it's obviously the cap. Um, I don't know what the requirements would be for Willie to go up there, but uh, it would suit the suit the situation for sure. You might be able to get too long to look after half the contract or something. But one thing that the Brisbane side aren't is short up front. They've got some wonderful young players coming through. He only played 53 minutes. He's a former Rookie of the Year back in 2010, but I'm not quite sure. I just had a quick look through the interchange throughout oh. the clubs. I don't know if there's a bigger potential match winner on the bench. Mate, he's so, he is so explosive. Put Josh McGuire next to him as well. Just two blokes who are just rock solid. How's that Mate, shot? Mate, he's got the agility Look at that. of an edge player. Look at that. Boom. Oh, that's sick of me. the power of a front rower. And he's timing. He's got the timing like a half. He hits holes really well. He's, he's this big gangly thing coming at you. I felt sorry for your fullback. When What's he, he like to tackle, Gillette? Through that hole. Yeah, what he does, he shows the ball. He's got some skill uh, as well. So it's just not a, a physical side of him. He's got skill there and it puts you in two minds. So... Um, yeah, I was really impressed with him and I like you say, Maguire as well, he, he found some good punch for us. I think your winger, James McManus, has been one of your better players in the opening three weeks and he avoided some embarrassment on Friday night by not being run down by Ben Hannon. Now, if you're looking at Olympic sprinting styles, I think Ben Hannon's got everybody covered. Look at the big Bundy bear in the back there. He's got a sled behind him. Where's the weight? He's got a weight, he's got a weight bomb. Where's sure. the little elbow ready? There you go. <laughs> I'm, here. I'm yeah. sure it'll be Benny just coming to the field. I'm sure he did. But, uh, he did a good job. We had. Um, then got interchange. We had yeah, Matty Hilda having his first kick for years. You know, it was a bit of a pressure kick as well. So he, he forced him wide, did his job. Uh, he was actually man of the match, Ben Hannett. Uh, big work rate. And um, I guess in the absence with Petro Sivanasiva uh, coming up, they, um, you know, they were looking for some strong performances up front and got that. Now, one thing that was very evident in the opening half hour of this game was some, some injuries picked up by the Newcastle side. In fact, it was no coincidence that Brisbane went down their left side, your right side defence, because Aquilio Arte picked up a hip flexor. Wes Naguama only lasted 22 minutes. And Jared Mullen also came up with a bit of an ankle problem. But in that period of time, it's not necessarily talked about that much in Jared Mullen's game, but defensively, he was sensational mm. under duress. Yeah. yeah, that's right. We'll practice a lot on our defence as a group. Um, you know, we split, uh, we got left and right edge in the middle and we sort of compete against each other and you know, Muller's done a great job. On the left, we probably gave Hodges too much room. As you saw, he sort of a good try and pretty destructive all night. But um, we'll go through the tape and I think Muller, you know, he, he battled on really well. It was a bit of a mental game for him and uh, he, he came through. So um, hopefully he's okay for next week because we're, we're, we're yeah. lacking in halves yeah, at the Bulldogs moment. Bulldogs next week. Yeah. Bulldogs and then we've got Melbourne. I was going through the stats. I saw that he's missed 40 tackles and 20 yeah. were from the edge players. But Muller only made miss one. Well, it's, it's a big rap. Obviously, a stack of traffic went through there. All the other blokes were having troubles with the numbers they were putting in there, but he found his mark all the time. So Yeah, no, he's, well he's prepared as well as anyone for the, for the season, and he, he's strong and fit. So hopefully he can um, do away with his injuries and uh, have a good season. Yeah, I was surprised to see Aquila Uade come out second half. Whatever they did to him at half time, it, it was... Uh Doing some chicken, like, like burning some it was, <laughs> whatever it was, he came out and all of a sudden he was back to running through brick walls. So it was nice work from the medical staff. Now, a disappointing loss up there, the second of the season at Hunter Stadium in front of their home fans for Newcastle, but Brisbane uh, make it 
Uh, well, they bounce back from a, a surprise second round defeat at the hands of the Cowboys. We'll take our first break and come back and have a look how the Dragons and Storm added wins to their ledger so far this weekend. <laughs> now, the, uh, you, you sent me a text on Friday night about all the redheads in uh, that Newcastle game. You counted five or six? Yeah, no, it was amazing. The amount of rangers on the field. I've never seen that many, you know, fire bushes, rangers, gingers, whatever you want to call them. But, uh, <laughs> Yeah, there were certainly a lot of uh, rangers out there, and I don't know if you know, but they reckon that people that have got red hair were conceived upside down. So that's pretty interesting. But uh, <laughs> hold on, what? But um, apparently they're conceived upside down. That's what Google what do you told mean? me. Who, who's upside down? Well, they're conceived sexually upside down. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, hang on, hang on. <laughs> hang on, hang on. <laughs> if we can get to the bottom oh, of I have to. Tim, I have to get to the bottom of this. <laughs> uh, pardon, both pardon both the male and female upside oh, I've got down. no idea, but, you know, that's for another day. You can't day, just say a comment like that and can't back it up. Well, I just Google, mate. Just Google. Oh, the, so. other thing, the, other but, thing, uh, the other thing before we move on and look at a couple of yeah. redheads, Sarah Harris, one of the newsreaders, has a boyfriend who's a redhead. She reckons it's been clinically proven that they have tougher thresholds when it comes yeah. to pain, so they need more anesthetic. But you've been spotting redheads, and <laughs> it's, it's made us get quite yeah. nostalgic. Um, they well, need to get back to that. Yeah, well, when I looked at it on the weekend, I couldn't believe how many redheads were actually in the Knights <laughs> Brisbane game. And we went through and we counted six. And I actually sent through the text message. Everyone asked me who the sixth person was. It's actually a coup. He's actually got red hair, believe it or not, and he shaves it. But uh, that actual incident there, we were playing Manly and he turned up to training with red hair. And uh, Rick Stone, the coach, threatened to fine him $1,500 and not play him if he actually continued to wear the red hair. Um, given that another great Knights player uh, dyed his hair red. Um, playing against Manly, the great Andrew Johns, <laughs> yes. and uh, apparently he didn't play too well that day. And uh, the red hair apparently is never to be worn by a player unless he's born with it again, due to Joey Johns. So, mm. uh, what happened there, Joey? Yeah, bad time in life, Doogie. <laughs> bad time in life. Ha happens to all of us. The, Charity, uh, wasn't it? Well, it's happened to you, as it, Tim. <laughs> yeah. yeah well, I, well, I, well, I haven't gone red, but I've got, I'm going very, very grey. You wonder why that there's such a massive swing in form. You know, I know uh, Danny Bedeeris is on the panel here, and he might be able to answer this. That uh, I know that sometimes. Um, when we used to have great wins at Newcastle, Bedsy and Mark Hughes used to go shopping at about 3.30 in the afternoon uh, when all the mums and kids were out at the supermarket in their night's gear and, you know, wave and stuff. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, we'd have a bad loss and you'd see Bedsy, you know, skulking around coals at about 11 o'clock at night. It's an accusation happening here, Danny. So, uh, you take the... Take the then, what's your I response? I learned a lot off Mark Hughes, and that was definitely one of them. Yeah. <laughs> so, what's that coming up on the bottom of the screen? <laughs> no, there's a tweet just gone up. <laughs> that was, was Mad Dog conceived in the back, back, of, a, uh, back of a youth Yo, because he's bald? <laughs> <laughs> that's, Yo, follow, that's following on. That's oh, no, following that's on from the line of the redhead. Like. Okay, and we're also looking for a good performance from you very, very shortly. Freddie's passed the yes. ball and has made a comeback. Uh, Robbie Farrar is our leader, and he should be because he's the only one who's played so far. But after the break, Danny Bedeiris will be trying to overcome one of his uh, hooker rivals on the Freddie Pass the Ball competition. Back in a moment. After quite a hiatus, it was met with great fanfare when it made its return. Uh, the Pass the Ball is back, and it is Freddie's Pass the Ball competition. Oh! So no bloody arguments, you understand? Oh. No football there, Greeny. Oh. And a 10. No pressure, Luke. Oh, this oh, is yeah. one of the more important things that happens here on a Sunday, you understand? Oh, beautiful. Rounds of applause. Righto, Freddie's pass off. Spoke to Gins last week. Massive rating spike. So, have a look. <laughs> Plenty of place here to advertise. All right, our two helpers today Golden Retriever Brian and little blue cattle dog Joey. Bedsy, 167. Righto. Do you like your chance? Consistent scoring that one, Fred. Yeah, it was pretty good. We've got to make sure we've got it sorted. Yep. Joey, first. Yeah, I've sorted it. 30 second mark, we're going to change over. Let's go, dude. Let's do it. Righto. Come on, Beds. <laughs> Who's, uh, still are you going to start us off? I'm going to start you off. Uh, All right. Danny, uh, five seconds, four, three, two, one, go. Oops. Five. Five. Come on, Fletch. <laughs> oh, yes, Ben. <laughs> yes, Ben. Yes, yes. Yeah. Seven. Oh. Five. Oh, come on, Freddie, help me. Yes, Ben. ben. <laughs> Five. Seven. Yes, Ben. Five. Quick. Oh. Joey. Oh. 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 Yeah. Oh, 
We need some more help. Also. Quick. Go and retrieve Oh, her. yes, Ben. Ten. Ball. Five. Ball. Seven. Balls. <laughs> Give us some more balls. balls. Daniel, what? don't just stand there. Ben. Oh. Five. Ten. Five. Give balls. Four. Seven. <laughs> three. <laughs> Two. Oh, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. I've got to say, oh, that's unbelievable. some of the staff around here, there's 20 people out here. Tim, get off your butt, mate. Pick up a ball. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Benzie was hammered. All right, give us a score. The score is 167. Oh, 162. Oh. 162. 162, yeah. I've got to say, yeah, yeah. The, the staff are telling me to let you down. I'm looking for <laughs> a text. <laughs> I need a text to something right. right. We'll, we'll get one. So 162, oh, there yeah. it is, Amp. Well, that one goes up. Robbie Farrah. <laughs> 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 R- remains a leader. Danny Badiris, uh, you're a star. We want to thank you for coming in, especially after a loss. Uh, good luck. It doesn't get any easier next week. You've got the Bulldogs? Yeah, Bulldogs and Manly, both ways, so it's tough. And your name's been mentioned for State of Origin this year. Are, are you available for the Blues? Um, yeah, on form. You know, I'd have to be ticking a few boxes to play on that. There's some good hookers there, but... Proud New South Welshman, I'd love to play. OK, well, it's been a bad Good weekend for you. Oh, you, got, sweating. you got beaten by Brisbane, you got beaten by Robbie Farrow. Good luck for the rest of the season. In league, Newcastle has inflicted the Bulldogs' first defeat of the season this afternoon. Kurt Gidley made an early return from a shoulder injury as the Knights' big men dominated from the outset. <laughs> A solo try from Jared Mullen extended the Knights' lead to 12 at the break. The final score, 20 points to 6. In the battle of the Supercoaches, it was a clear win today to Wayne Bennett's Knights over Des Hasler's Bulldogs. In Melbourne, the Storm flogged the Roosters 44-4, while the Knights got up 20-6, ending the Bulldogs' unbeaten run. Whatever was on the Bulldogs' pink sheet wasn't taken on board. Hasler had his plan, but it was the Knights who followed early instructions. Snowden's got a chance! Snowden passes! Pinned on their own line, the Bulldogs were fronted with more trouble when Mullen took over. The Knights' day complete when a redhead signed off on the last of their tries. And now here's McKinnon lunging over to score! He just kept legging him down the field. The stats will speak for themselves. There's breaking news in the league with the Tigers chasing Braith and Astor, while Cooper Cronk's knocked back the Rabbitohs and will tomorrow reveal whether he'll stay in Melbourne. Friday's battle between his captain and knight Danny Badiris could determine if the Blues turn to their old skipper this year. Even at 34 and after three years in Super League, Danny Badiris is still dreaming of state of origin. Performs warranted and they want to go that way. You know, I'm as proud as they get to, to represent New South Wales. Badiris was the last man to lead the Blues to victory in 2005 and teammates say he can do it again. Oh, mate, it wouldn't worry me if you were 50 years old and you were still playing the way Beds is. But the true test will come when he goes head-to-head with the Storms, Queensland and test hooker Cameron Smith on Friday night. The hookers you want to be playing against, but you know, what will be will be. I just want to play as good as I can for the Knights. In Melbourne, the storm proved far too good for the Knights. Billy Slater was never too far from the action, picking up his ninth try in five games. That is a miracle pickup. It's probably, you know, near as good as. You know, as we've played this year. It was a performance so impressive, even the super coach was in awe. They're the best at the execution of the competition right now, and they made us play. Melbourne's only concern, Anthony Quinn, placed on report for this high shot on Todd Lowry. Yeah. Matt Sulo, 10 News. A big night for banners in Melbourne as the storm marked 15 years in the NRL. Fans spelling yeah, out their no support for Billy Slater, or was that Slate? Double. Whatever they call him, He's the best. Picked up off his toes by Billy Slater. That is a miracle pickup. And with Cooper Cronk pulling the strings, Melbourne dominated. No, over goes Lowry. Anthony Quinn's on report for this shot on Junior Sau. Revenge took the form of a wayward conversion attempt. Oh, he's nearly completely knocked out one of the Melbourne players. Lots of things I was pleased about tonight, so. Uh, it wasn't all doom and gloom for me personally. All right, number four, Chief and Spud. This was my favourite. I was a uni student in Newcastle when uh, <coughs> when this rivalry sort of sparked up 
And there was that big night at the Friday night footy that I was the last bloke into the ground. I lied to get in, and I just went whooshka and knocked each other out like that, <laughs> which was just fantastic. <laughs> They just sort of epitomised two teams that didn't didn't like each other at all. And two players that weren't too flash on each other either, particularly when you got across the white line. And uh, we're still on Newcastle, and one of our uh, normal uh, panel members here, our regular panel members, Adam Mad Dog McDougall <laughs> and Wendell Saylor. I reckon the beauty about this one is you can imagine what's being said between the two guys. Like, the footage is just awesome, but the sledging that would have been going on prior, there's Mad Dog missing completely with a high shot. Here he comes. Straight over the top. This is brilliant footage. Oh, and he's, he's and stolen the, the ball. Deal. The amount of dribble that would have gone on between the two of them. Oh, imagine. You couldn't get Pumping a each other up. Sport now with Tony Squires and Tamana Tahu's had a change of heart. Yeah, remember he walked out of Origin, Chris, uh, in that racism row. We'll find out what he wants to do now. That's next. Kiwi star Gerard Beale will swap Broncos colours for the Red V next season after signing a three-year deal with the Dragons. Meanwhile, Tamana Tahu wants back into State of Origin two years after he walked out over a racism row. Tamana Tahu's fit and firing and can't wait to face the Eels this week, even if his stint at Parramatta ended in tears. I've sort of pretty much forgotten all about that and, you know, I'm, I'm a lot happier being here. He walked out of the Blues after a race round with Andrew Johns that year. Tahu now wants back in and hopes it doesn't count against him. No, oh, I can and I can't. It depends how, how people think. You know, I can't make that decision for him. I'll be keen, but I don't know if I'll get picked or not. And the Eels better beware because he won't tone down that aggression. Uh, I'm not going to stop that. Wayne said not to stop it. Mate, uh, Joey, I want to come to you now. Congrats, mate. You made the Hall of Fame for the Knights. The that, nice was last, that was last yeah. night. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Chief, um, Paul Harrigan made it. Um, Matthew Gidley. Help me out here. So, uh, Al McMahon, and Al McMahon, yeah. the, the inaugural coach. Hagen. It was yeah. a great night, actually. It was a, you know, these nights. There's um, the great Chiefy, looking good. It was a really good night. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, they started the Hall of Fame up there, and you know, really honoured. There's only five of us yeah. being um, awarded that, so I'm sure there'll be many more. To Good morning and happy Easter from everybody here on the Sunday Footy Show. Hope you're having a great weekend. Plenty of eggs have come your way, but still getting your NRL action as well. Of course, a little bit unusual. We've only had the four matches played so far. We'll round out round six tomorrow night out of Brookvale over with Monday Night Football. But three matches played today, triple tree today, including our big one up the F3 at Hunter Stadium where the Parramatta Eels will travel up there to take on the Newcastle Knights. Speaking of Newcastle, I'm joined by Andrew Johns. And not speaking of Newcastle when it comes to you, Freddie, but you're Joined us as well. Oh, nice. Yeah. I don't, yeah. Looked after me I, with I, the roosters. Well, we, we've, we've got a very special guest host on, and I don't know if this is coincidence or not, but Joey, uh, already a big week up in Newcastle on, yep. on Wednesday night. The inaugural inductees into the Hall of Fame up there were named, and you were one of the five. Now, you've, you've been named in every team and in, in, in that many honours, but what about this one, so close to home? What does this one mean? Yeah, it was a real honour, Stella, um, along with Paul Harrigan, seen there on, on screen now, and, and Matthew Gidley. And, Michael Hagan and the first coach, Alan McMahon. It was, uh, it was a really great night and, uh, yeah, I got a real kick out of it, mate. It was a real honour. Now, initially, it was to be... There was a short list down to four that four. were going to be named, but they extended it to five. To five, yeah. Put the, the first coach, Alan McMahon, and a lot of the principles he put in place from day one still are there today. So he, he was a great man for the club. Hey, welcome back to the Sunday Footy Show. Our big match this afternoon takes us up to Hunter Stadium, where the... Newcastle Knights will be taking on the Parramatta Eels. And as I mentioned earlier, it's been a, a big week up in Newcastle. Uh, one thing about that club is that they've created a, a good tradition in a very short period of time. And part of that tradition was the Hall of Fame announcements on Wednesday evening. Uh, Andrew Johns alongside me was one of the five names. And another one is Michael Hagan, who was a coach up there, took them to their second grand final victory. He was player of the year in 1989, played 111 first grade games for the Newcastle Knights. Michael, thanks for joining us. Congratulations. And the same question to you. Um, how did you feel on Wednesday night when you heard your name read out? Uh, well, uh, Sterlo, to be very honest, mate, I was quite uh, rattled and surprised to be in such illustrious company with a guy sitting alongside you, I think, Chief, Matty Gidley and Alan McMahon, I thought was a really good 
um, idea to bring him into the Hall of Fame given that he set the club up in the first place and, and we all probably came here in part in those early years because of him so uh, his wife Glennis accepted his uh, nomination on his behalf and um, you know, very honoured to be amongst those uh, group of men. Now you went up to Newcastle after establishing yourself at Canterbury. The Hagen name is synonymous with the Bulldogs. You won a premiership there. So I'm not saying you went up there as necessarily an outsider, but in some ways you were. You were. So it must be even more special to, to be appreciated that way, the fact that you went from another club where you'd had success to link up with the Newcastle Knights. Well, I guess um, I left a, a very strong and, and successful club in the Bulldogs. Um, we won the comp in 1988 and, and basically agreed to come to a team that had finished second last in the same year. But I just thought Newcastle had a great future. There was an opportunity for me to play 5'8 here at this club with Terry Lamb, you know, still being such an uh, integral part of the Bulldogs. So I think in hindsight it was probably the right move. And Sue and I and the girls have now been here for, you know, well over 20 years and it's been a tremendous uh, involvement with the club as a player and as a coach. And, um, you know, we've really settled into the, the New Newcastle lifestyle. And even though I'm from Queensland, Pete, they, they, I think I'm nearly qualifying as a Nova Cashier these days. Yeah, Hags, what are you expecting from the Knights today? Well, I, th I think it's getting to the critical stage, Joe, for them. Um, you know, they have been uh, disappointing in their first couple of games at home, I think, against uh, Saints and Brisbane. Uh, not, not by just getting beaten, but the way in which they've played. I think they've lacked a bit of intent uh, at the start of both of those games. So I think today's a real, a real uh, important game for them to get uh, their, their winning uh, momentum at home underway. And, and they're going to come up against a team uh, coming off a good performance last week with a lot of points in them. So I think they've got um, you know, a fairly tough job in front of them this afternoon. But I think if they're, if they're on, they should uh, be good enough to get the money. Hey, Hags, a backbone to night success since, since Day Dot has been their culture. When they're winning, their culture's been excellent. How is the culture at the club at the moment? I think all that is uh, very strong, uh, Brad. I think, you know, Wayne... Uh, instills that type of uh, attitude and culture into a football team and, and I think that was there for uh, certainly parts of last week against Melbourne against the Bulldogs a week before that it was very good and, and they got through their sets well they defended a lot more aggressively at the ruck and I think you know, they're the couple of things that, that Wayne Bennett coach seems are normally uh, you know that's what you normally look for so today I would expect that intent and that um, ball control to be very high against Parramatta who you know if you give them opportunities in, in that good part of the field they'll, they'll take advantage of them on that subject of coaching, Mick, you're one of the handful of coaches to have won a premiership your first year with the clipboard. Do you miss it at all? Not, um, not at this stage, still. I think you can do it for a period of time, and I probably ended up in a full-time coaching role for about, probably about 11 years if you take into a couple of years in the lower grades. So, just that uh, weekly sort of grind, I probably don't miss that too much. I really enjoy the involvement with uh, the Queensland team. You know, for that six or eight. Uh, intense period. I really enjoy that role and I enjoy right, being involved in a, a more of a supporting role, I guess. Um, you know, so that's something I really enjoy. And the week to week stuff and being in the firing line, I'm not sure about that anymore. Well, we appreciate your time this morning. Congratulations again. It's a great honour for you. And uh, we'll see you up there later on this afternoon. Thanks, Mick. Thanks. Thanks very much. It should be a good one too this afternoon. Uh, Parramatta, their first victory of the season last week. They take on the Newcastle Knights, who I thought they hung in there against the Melbourne Storm down at Amy. You'll see our coverage from 4pm through 9 and through Gem. And there's a nice story about Michael Hagan when he was looking for, to take over the Newcastle Knights from Warren Ryan. He went to the walk, the great coach, and, and said, have you got any advice for me? And the walk only had one word. He said, rent. <laughs> and, 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 and it might have been decent advice, but Mick Hagan still up in Newcastle and uh, yeah, still part of, advice, part of our game. <laughs> yeah, so. I'm a renter. Now, speaking of that game, uh, Andrew and myself, we're about to head off up there. We want to get up there before um, kick off, uh, before kick off, and of course it is it is double demerits mm -hmm. as well, so be careful heading yeah, up okay. there. But we're going to leave you in <laughs> very, very good company with the rest of the team, and part of that team, of course, is Erin Molan. Thanks, Pete. Massive game this afternoon on Channel 9. The Eels up against the Knights. Now, the Knights are 1 through to 17. The Eels' Essie Tonga is still in a little bit of doubt. I've spoken with the club and they say haven't made a decision yet on him, but we'll let you know if they make that in the next hour or so. Relief for Parramatta in the NRL has only lasted a week and Aquila Uate double sinking the Eels in Newcastle. It took just six minutes for the hosts to open the scoring. Uate crossing in the corner thanks to some weak Parramatta defence. It's three on two. Junior Sauer tracks them all in. No one pays any attention to the football. 
except for Aquila Uate. Yoso, and then Uate and sealing a 14 to 6 point win for the Knights, leaving the Eels cemented to the bottom of the ladder. The Eels were desperate to make it back-to-back -back wins today, but the Knights picked up the points in a mistake-riddle game in Newcastle. In Canberra, the Raiders blew the Warriors away, while the Knights got up 14-6. to six. A young Eels fan didn't care who had the Easter eggs. Hindmarsh and Baderas handed over the chockies before Uate swallowed the easiest of four points. Oh dear, that was soft. There was only one try each in the first half, with Manor trying to lift his teammates. Yeah, Manor's got himself a try. Both teams were out to make a match of it, but in 80 minutes of footy, there wasn't a lot to get excited about. Moy Moy for the line, does he get the ball down? No. I don't think Wayne would be real happy, but he'd be happier than me. That's probably a good assessment. BG and flyer Aku Yuate landed two tries as the Knights sent the Eels crashing back to earth. While the Raiders smashed the Warriors in Newcastle, Parramatta couldn't repeat last week's win over Manly. Danny Madeira has played Easter Bunny to Eels fans, but there wasn't much joy for Parramatta when Sa'u threw a beauty to Aku. Oh dear, that was soft. His wingman over untouched in the corner while the Eels went through the middle to get on the board through Tim Manor. He might have found the chalk. But when the match was there to be won, who do you go to but Sa'u and Aku? I don't think Wayne would be real happy, but he'd be happier than me. I'd look happier than him. <laughs> There's your answer. Next up, his old Dragons on Friday night. We can live with the, with the shabby performance today, knowing that it's back on again Friday night, playing a good team, which we got lost in overtime to last time six weeks ago. So it'll be good to go down there and go at them again. Sports tonight now with Brad McEwen, and unlike Tony Bennett, a Dragons favourite is calling it a day. That's right, Bill. Dean Young forced into retirement because of injury. Also ahead, the Knights assure fans they will be fine despite their billionaire owner severing ties with the Newcastle Jets. The Knights say they have no concerns for their NRL future despite billionaire owner Nathan Tinkler pulling the Newcastle Jets out of the A-League today. The mining magnate's relationship with Football Federation Australia has fallen apart. 18 months after being rescued from bankruptcy, Newcastle's Jets are grounded. The Hunter Sports Group uh, will not be fielding a Newcastle Jets team in the 2012-2013 A-League season. After a $12 million investment, Nathan Tinkler's Hunter Sports Group returned the team's A-League licence, citing an untenable relationship with the FFA and the ongoing financial issues of the league, with its club set to post a combined loss of $30 million. And propping up the FFA and, and propping up their their decisions that we don't agree with is not what we think is best for Newcastle. But cooling off the Jets won't be that simple. The two parties are said to be embroiled in an expensive legal battle, with the FFA claiming Tinkler has signed a participation agreement that won't expire until 2020. To noon that we do not accept the termination and that they should live up to the commitments that have been made. In and while the players and coaches have been assured their contracts will be paid out, Tinkler's about face has left Newcastle with some very angry and disillusioned fans. If you only bought the Jets to, you know, get the Knights, then, you know, you owe 11,000 Jets fans a, a big apology. I think it's a gr absolute disgrace. And, yeah, they just didn't do it, make a right decision. The drama's overshadowed tonight's A-League Awards and final series. Nick Lockyer, 10 News. Nathan Tinkler shuts down the Newcastle Jets. Could the Knights be next? The NRL is keeping a close eye on the Newcastle Knights with news today that mining magnate Nathan Tinkler is handing back his Newcastle Jets A-League licence. Like Clive Palmer on the Gold Coast, Tinkler is disillusioned with soccer's governing body. Nathan Tinkler's displeasure with the FFA was voiced by his sports group CEO. The A-League competition is financially unsustainable and the clubs are losing between 25 and $30 million per year. Among Tinkler's many grievances with the FFA is a lack of transparency by the ruling body. We should highlight there have been at least 10 owners before us who have returned their A-League licences over the seven years of the competition. The FFA are determined the Jets honour their contract that doesn't expire until 2020. The FFA does not accept that the Newcastle Jets have the right to return their A-League licence. 
at the Newcastle Knights, coach Wayne Bennett was soothing nervous Nellies. We were two separate identities. There's nothing for us to worry about. Apparently, Tinkler has a very good relationship with the NRL. For now. Sport now with Tony Squires who's sitting here trying to come up with an app of his own. Now another, <laughs> wouldn't we all well, like one? Luck, yeah. Now another soccer team's bit in the dust. And it's caused a huge stink, Chris, with Nathan Tinkler pulling the pin on the Newcastle Jets. That's next. Soccer's A-League is facing an explosive fresh crisis. Billionaire Nathan Tinkler's Hunter Sports Group handed back the Newcastle Jets licence this morning, but the FFA refused to accept it. The Jets' owners claim the dispute over a $5 million acquisition fee is among several factors forcing them out. Now, unfortunately, with the current feeling of ill will and a lack of trust, we felt we had no other option. The obligation is clearly upon the Hunter Sports Group to live up to its commitments, live up to its contract. It comes after the FFA scrapped Clive Palmer's Gold Coast and introduced a new Western Sydney team.